Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the Object Detection 101 course. In this course, we will cover everything to get you started with object detection along with four exciting and real world projects. We will first start with the theory and have a look at its brief history. Then we will understand the working of object detection along with its evaluation matrix. From there, we will install everything from the start and run the YOLO version 8 object detection pre trained models. Using these models, we will create two projects, car counter and people counter. Here we will learn how to implement object tracking along with object detection. We will also install and run YOLO with our GPU for better performance. Later, we will learn how to train a custom YOLO model using our own dataset and create two projects using our own training. The first one will be personal protective equipment detector and the second one will be poker hand detector where we will first detect the playing cards and then create a classifier to classify the correct poker hands. If you are a beginner, don't worry, this course is for you. We will go step by step so it is easy to follow. This is an information dense course that will provide you with maximum knowledge without wasting your time. Learning custom object detection is a superpower that can allow you to solve real world problems and it can be easily completed over a weekend. So buckle up and get your nerdy glasses on and let's get started. But wait, we are going to use NVIDIA's 3080 Ti graphics card in this course. Now my question to you is, would you like to have one too? If yes, then you are in luck. I will be giving away a 3080 Ti graphics card and all you have to do is register to NVIDIA's GTC 2023 conference through my link in the description and attend one of their sessions to enter the giveaway automatically. The conference will be held from 20 to 23rd March 2023. This is a great place to learn new things and keep up with the new trends in technology. So sign up today and I will see you there. What is object detection? Object detection is a computer vision technique for locating objects in an image or a video. Object detection gives us the bounding box information of the object as well as the classification of that object. What is the difference between object classification, object detection and object segmentation? Object classification is a type of image recognition that identifies what type of object is present in an image. Here the complete image is sent for classification, so the output is a single class. Object detection is a type of image recognition that is used to identify and locate the presence of an object in an image. This gives us the bounding box information and the class as well. Here the results can be multiple bounding boxes and classes. Object segmentation is the type of image recognition that is used to identify and separate the distinct objects in an image on a pixel level. Here we get the exact shape of the object detected rather than just the bounding box. Although image segmentation provides more information, image detection is still the first choice for most computer vision applications since it is less computationally expensive. A brief history of object detection. Object detection was first started in the 1970s. Researchers started to develop automated methods for object detection. The first automated object detection algorithm were based on simple features such as edges and corners. The first real object detection was Viola Jones developed in 2001. It used sliding windows to search for har like features which are simply rectangular features. This method became popular since it was real-time. For the longest time period, this method was used for face detection in smartphones and cameras. The histogram of oriented gradients was another method released in 2005 that focused on the shape of the object. It worked by extracting the gradient and orientation of the edges. This method was mostly used to detect humans in an image. Then came the revolution of AI with neural networks gaining popularity. The true potential was seen with convolutional neural networks when LXNet won the ImageNet large-scale vision recognition challenge in 2012. But this solved a classification problem and not detection. Later, Bruce Force methods were used to repurpose the CNN models to work as detection models. This was a very inefficient approach, so soon after came the RCNN, regions with CNN. 
that used selective regions to apply the classifiers. This gave good results, but it was slow. So then came the fast RCNN and the faster RCNN, which were faster, but still not real time. In 2015 came the breakthrough of YOLO. This outperformed all the other models and ran object detection in real time. This was a different approach as it used single pass of the input image to make predictions of the objects. Methods like RCNN used regional proposal to perform multiple iterations for the same image, while YOLO gets it done in a single iteration. This makes YOLO more efficient even though the architecture of YOLO is based on convolutional layers similar to its predecessors. Since then, YOLO versions have been releasing faster than Andrew Tate's $5 million Bugattis. Every time I come back from the toilet, I have to check if a newer version of YOLO was already released. But don't worry, the change between each iteration is not always very significant. It's like Apple telling us how their latest iPhone design is completely different from the previous one. If you don't believe me, have a look at these results. Can you guess which is the latest model? Absolutely not. So even if a newer version comes in, the previous versions don't go out of date. Performance Evaluation Metrics In order to evaluate our object detection models, there are two main metrics that we need to understand. One is to evaluate how good is the location and the other is how good is the classification. First is the IOU to measure the localization and the second is the MAP for classification. IOU stands for intersection over union. It tells us how close the predicted bounding box is to the ground truth. It's a value between 0 and 1. If the boxes overlap, then it's a perfect detection with an IOU of 1. If the boxes have some overlap, then the values are between 0 and 1, depending on how much the overlap is. If there is no overlap, then the IOU is 0. The value of IOU is calculated by taking the ratio between the area of the intersection and the area of the union of bounding boxes. In order to understand average precision, we need to know confusion matrix, precision and recall. Confusion matrix is a simple table that consists of actual classes on one side and the predicted classes on the other. Let's have a look at an example of a car classifier. In the first cell, the actual class is of a car, and the model predicted it as a car, so it's a true positive. In the second cell, the actual class is a house, but the model predicted it as a car, so it's a false positive. In the third cell, the actual class is a car, but the model predicted it as not a car, so it's a false negative. In the last cell, the actual class is ball, and the model predicted it as not a car. So it's a true negative. This value corresponds to not predicting a bounding box and is usually the background. So it is not used in the metrics calculations. Using these values, we can calculate the precision and the recall. Precision is the total positives out of the total positive predictions. Recall is the actual positives out of all predictions. In mathematical terms, precision is true positive divided by true positive plus false positives. Recall is true positive divided by true positive plus false negatives. Since both matrix provide us valuable information, we combine them to one called the precision average. This is the area under the precision recall curve. The precision recall curve maximizes the effects of both the matrix and give us a better idea of the overall accuracy of the model. This average precision is of a single class. If we have multiple classes, then the mean of these precision values is the mean average precision, also known as MAP. So the first thing we will do is to download Python. And to do that, we can go to python.org. So we will simply go to downloads. And here you can see you can download the latest version. But that is not recommended because it might have some errors or it might need some bug fixes so we'll go to all releases and here we'll go down and you can see python 3.11 will have support till 27 uh, python 3.10 will have till 26 so you can see the information here so this is basically the long-term support so here in the release version 
I would suggest to go, uh, don't go for the latest one, go uh, for the one that is one below the latest one. So for example, here you can see 3.10.9. So we can download this. We can simply press on download. And here you will go to Windows 64 bit and you will click on that. So it will start the download. Now you can have multiple versions of Python as well. So you can have the same project running on different Python versions. So you can see which one is more stable, which one gives you better results. So I will show you how you can do that because I already have Python 3.7.6, which I have been using for the longest time period. And I will also show you how you can use Python 3.10 uh, in this case. So we will be using Python 3.10, but if we had to, uh, downgrade I will show you how you can do that or if we had to upgrade I will show you how to do that as well so what you will do is you will click on Python so here make sure that you add python.exe to the path and you will click on install now okay so the setup is done and we can close now we will go to PyCharm which is our IDE now if you're not familiar with IDE it stands for integrated development environment. It's basically a notepad where you can write code, but it will help you out to write the code. It will tell you where the problems are, how to fix the bugs and all that. So what you will do is you will go to PyCharm. So this is jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. And you will go to download. And in the downloads, there is a professional version and there's a community version. So you have for Mac OS and Linux as well. So we will be working on Windows, so we will download for that. So for the community version, you can simply hit download because it is free and it is more than enough for what we need. So now the download has started and we will wait for it to finish. So now the download is complete and we will hit on PyCharm community. We'll click on next, next, and we will associate .py files with that. We'll add bin folder to the path and PyCharm community edition. We'll create the desktop icon as well. Install. Then we are going to restart our computer and hit finish. And then we are going to open up PyCharm. So this is not the first time I am installing PyCharm. So it has some memory of what I've been doing. So it has some of the default parameters. So you might see some uh, pop-ups that will ask you a few questions, uh, how to set up a few things. So you can set them up, click next, 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 and it should be fine, or you can close them. And the main thing that I'm going to tell you that you need to do is right now so you will click on file and you are going to create a new project and here is the main thing so this is an environment so basically what you do is uh, you have the actual python and you copy that basically and you create a virtual environment that is separate to everything else so this project will have its own environment and whatever you install will be installed in this environment so this is based on a specific version of Python. So here, the base interpreter you have to mention. So right now, the base interpreter is Python 3.1.0. So you can also have Python, for example, 3.7. So I have these two, Python 3.7 and Python 3.10. So I can choose between these two. So for now, I'm going to choose, for example, this one. So what I will do is when I'm creating the environment, I'm putting down the name and I can write uh, environment and I can write 310. So this has a version uh, as well. So here we'll just name it Python project and we are going to hit create. So we will use the same window to create this project. And here we have our Python project and that is created with the main file. And you can see the virtual environment 3.10 has been created. So what I can do is I can remove all this and I can simply write print hello world. So let's go ahead and right click and we are going to run main and this will give us hello world. So this is running Python 3.10. How do I know this is because you can see here we have Python 3.10. We don't have Python 
3.7 so what we will do is we are going to go to file and any package that we want to install we can go to settings and then we will go to project python project and we'll go to python interpreter and here we can add any package that we want whether it's OpenCV, whether it's cv zone whether it's ultralytics whatever it is you can install here so for example we can go ahead and install numpy numpy so we will click on install package and it will take a while and you can also specify which version of numpy do you want to install we are installing the latest one that is available right now so we can hit close and here you can see now in the packages we have numpy installed this is the current version and this is the latest version so they are up to date so these three are already installed so you don't have to worry about those then we can simply click ok so here if I write imports numpy and if I run this it will not give me any error which means numpy has been installed if I write anything else it will give me an error because there is no library called numpy2y right so that's the basic idea so this is import numpy now if i go to file and if i go to settings i can create a new virtual environment if i wanted to use two different pythons i could create a new virtual environment to do that you can click here you can go to show all and over here we can click on add so here we can create a new environment and here we will create for 3.7. So we will select 3.7 as our brace interpreter and we have named the virtual environment 3.7 and then we'll press OK. So now it will create and it will shift it to 3.7. We'll hit OK. But now you can see that we installed numpy earlier but it was installed in the virtual environment of uh, 3.10 but now it's not installed in 3.7 because we are now using 3.7 as the main environment so that's why it is giving us an error over here so if i run this now it will give me an error that there is no numpy but if i click here and go to 3.10 and then it will load up and if I run it again it will not give me an error because numpy is already installed so you have to make sure that your libraries are installed uh, if you are trying different versions of Python so here you can go to library and you can see you have numpy installed so here in 3.7 you will not see numpy so what you can do is if you wanted to use in uh, 3.7 you will make sure it's 3.7 over here and you will go to file settings and here you are going to install numpy now it will install it to 3.7 as well so the reason i'm telling you this is because later on you might face some issue in for example 3.12 or 3.15 and you might you might want to downgrade or you might want to upgrade later on so instead of creating a new project and doing all of these things together uh, again what you can do is you can simply have a new virtual environment and have the same project running so it will not be very difficult to uh, debug so here you can see we have installed numpy for 3.7 as well so now if i run with 3.7 or 3.10 it will run with both so for most project we are only going to use one python environment we will usually use the higher one unless there are some major issues in that so then in that case we are going to downgrade so now that we understand how to install PyCharm and how to install Python, uh, you can add more Python versions. Now we can simply go ahead and start working on our project. So here we are going to create our PyCharm project, which is object detection YOLO. And we are creating a new virtual environment and the environment is based on the base interpreter of Python version 3.1.0, so 3.10. So it is up to you which Python version you want to use. 
So we are using 3.10. If you have a newer version, you can use that too, but don't use the latest one because it might yield some errors. So uh, what we'll do is we'll simply hit on create. And there you go. We have our project and here we have a main file. So what we can do is we can use this main file to test our code. Uh, we can simply write print, print hello world and we can run it just to see if everything is working and it's working fine. So in order to get started, what we have to do is we have to do some installations on this virtual environment. So if you look at this folder, we have the virtual environment. If you click on that in the libraries, these are the site packages. We need to install some packages in order to run our project. So how can you do that? You can go to file settings and in the project Python interpreter, you can click on add you can type in the version for example you can type in the site uh, package name for example cv zone and you can hit install now when we are working with object detection there's a lot of libraries that are working at the back end so installing them one by one will take a lot of time so what you can do is a simple way of doing this is copying a requirements file or uh, you can create your own file as well so here, this is a standard version. Uh, this is a standard way of doing this. So what you can do is you can simply paste requirements.txt uh, in this project. So where do you get this requirements.txt? You can download it from our website, uh, computervision.zone. It is free to download. All you have to do is sign up. If you already have signed up, just sign in. Uh, with your account go to the course page and there you can download everything related to the course absolutely free so you don't have to pay anything you can just download and you can copy it here so here you can see as soon as we copy the requirements.txt file it will give us a notification package requirements all of these packages have not been installed so what you can do is you can click on install requirements and it will install all the requirements that you need so what do these mean? So for example, CV zone double equals 1.5.6. This means use the exact same version 1.5.6. Don't use anything above it. Don't use anything below it. The exact same version. So right now I'm using Python 3.10. So with this, all of these versions should work fine. Now, when it is greater than or equals to, then it means that use this at the very least, or if there's a newer version, use that instead. So this can be a little bit dangerous or tricky because if the newer version is not compatible, it might not work. So you have to be careful which ones uh, are you hard coding to be exact same version and which ones are you saying. For example, here for Python, we have hard coded it to the exact same version. Normally it's not done like this. But because the latest version has some issues in auto um, correcting, we are going to use uh, .60. This is the version that does not have this issue. So that's why I have hard coded it to be this exact version. Now, if you have a later version that works fine for you, that's okay. But if it doesn't, then it's better if you use the exact same thing. Now, sometimes what happens is, that you install everything but some of them do not install and again that might be the issue of that it's not compatible they don't have a version that satisfy the, uh, satisfies the requirement so what you can do is you can downgrade or you can upgrade it's based on that for example uh, scikit-learn for example this scikit image let's say it doesn't work or we can simply comment it and it will remove it from the install uh, installations so later on uh, if I give it a wrong number, let's say like that, it will give us an error that it was unable to install. So in that case, either you can come here and fix the number here uh, based on the version, or you can go to file, you can go to settings, and in add, you can you can search for sci, what was the spelling? Sci kits, I believe. No, S-C-I-K-I-T dash image. Yeah, so you can click on that, you can specify version, and you can select which version do you need. 
it might be a higher version it might be a lower version so if the latest one doesn't work go to the previous one by default okay so uh, that being said let's just install everything we will click on install requirements it will ask us that do you want to install all of these we will say yes install and then we are simply going to wait for it, the installation to complete so the main library that we are using is ultralytics uh, that will provide us with the yolo package and uh, it will download the yolo weights for us as well so we will be using version 8 of yolo and if later versions come up you can use those two depending on whether they are um, are related to ultralytics or not so all of these packages are being installed and let's wait for it to finish so all the packages have now been installed as you can see all of them are installed and we are good to go so what we can do is we are going to create a new folder and we are going to call it chapter 5 and within chapter 5 we are going to say running yolo so then we will right click and we will create a new python file and we will call it yolo basics basics so there you go we have our first file and all we have to do is we have to test whether the yolo uh, will work or not and how exactly can we run it so in order to test yolo we need to have some images so we are going to run it on images first once we know it it works then we are going to try it with webcam in the next chapter so we have some images again you will find this on our website uh, once you download the zip file everything will be included in it so here you will see we have images and if you open up images the first image is of a school bus with some kids going into the school bus then the second image is of cars and the third image is of some bikes so motorbikes so these are the three image images that we are going to test on so once we have that now what we have to do is first of all we have to import ultralytics so we are going to write from ultralytics imports yolo so that is what we are going to import and then we also need to uh, import cv2 and i will tell you why okay let's just run it and i will tell you why later on so it is very simple with only two lines of code you can simply run your model so first of all we are going to create the model we'll call model equals yolo and then we are going to give in the weights so there are different types of weights you have uh, the nano the medium the large it's based on you which you want to use now the good thing about this uh, method is that you just type in the name of the the weights that you need and it will download the weights for you so for example we will write yolo version 8 and we are going to write n for nano so this will download the nano version so we will write here pt then we simply have to write results equals model and then we have to give in the source of the image so the image source is basically images slash and we can write one dot png so this is our image and then uh, all you have to do is you have to write show equals true so we want to see the image at the end so there you go so if we run this now right click yolo basics we are going to run it let's see what happens first of all it will download the weights once it's downloaded it will tell you that it is running on cpu so that is another thing we are going to discuss later on how to run it with gpu but for now nothing happened it did run the image it uh, it told us that it is running at this this speed and this is the size but it didn't actually show us anything so what exactly happened it actually opened up the image and it closed very quickly because there was no delay uh, it just opened up and closed so we need to stop it so here we will write 
import cv2 in order to stop it we will simply write cv2 dot wait key and we'll give the delay of zero zero means that unless the user inputs don't do anything so if we run this now this time around when we run it this is the image that we get so we have the bus being detected we have the person being detected handbag uh, ha uh, backpack backpack so there's a lot of good detections here and they are also giving you the confidence level of each of these so 0 0.35 0 0.78 of course the higher the confidence value uh, the better the detection is so this is quite good uh, we can close that but here again you can see that we have downloaded the weights and they are in our uh, chapter 5 folder now in order to uh, make it a little more efficient we don't want to download it for each chapter because each chapter or each project we are going to have some weights so if we are using the same weights we should not have it uh, being downloaded every single chapter so what you can do is you can create a new folder in the object detection YOLO we will create a new directory and we will call it YOLO weights and we are going to put our weights within YOLO weights when we refactor it now it's in the YOLO weights so here we can go back double dot slash that means go back and then we will write YOLO dash weights slash YOLO 8 9 uh, 8n so if we run this now it will run exactly the same way because it is able to find uh, this file within this folder so if you want to try out different uh, what do you call versions you can simply change the name here and uh, you can write for example uh, large and we can try to run it and see if it works so it is downloading now and once it's downloaded, uh, it should give us the results. So nano will be faster, medium will be a bit slower, large will be slower, and you can check out the other versions as well, which one uh, do you prefer? So this version is 83 MBs. I'm not sure how much was this. Let's open that up. Okay, this one was 6 MB so it's it's a huge difference in terms of weights so there you go it has been downloaded and now you can see uh, we are getting better results we have multiple results here we also found the skateboard which was not found with the nano version and there was a wrong detection here for the bus that is not detected as well but here it's saying handbag when it's a backpack so that is uh, still a mistake, but it works fine. So there you go. So this is how you can download and uh, you can run the models. So what we can do now is we can run images.png2. So let's see what that, how that works. So there you go. So you have lots of cars being detected, uh, some with confidence of 0 0.88 some with 0 0.85 some with 0 0.67 um, you can you can see the pattern the closer it is to the camera uh, it actually detects it very well the further it is from the camera uh, it might not detect uh, basically the idea is how clear is the sight of viewing so if it's able to detect if it's able to find the car a bit more it will be easier to classify it will be easier to detect and the confidence level will be higher but if it's far if it's blur then of course the confidence level will not be that much so that's the basic idea and then we'll go to images 3 and let's see how that works out so right now we are using the large version and you can use the nano version as well okay there you go so here we have a lot of detections motorcycles and we have a truck at the back uh, we have a person and they are overlaying on each other and it's a little bit difficult to see what exactly is going on and right now we are not really detect we are not really telling the system 
um, that put these bounding boxes and put the names and the confidence level this is done by default when you are saying show equals true then it's doing all of that so what later on what we will do is um, in the in the next chapter we are going to put all of these manually ourselves we will not use the default version and that way we will have much more control on how we can see because right now uh, they are overlaying on each other and it's not very clear so it will it's not very useful uh, in terms of uh, viewing so that's the basic idea that's how we can run different versions of yolo uh, the large the nano the small the medium so here if we write m uh, by the way i wanted to check if oh, we run it with the nano what exactly happens how many detections do we get so there you go so it says a car car and the person is not detected that was detected earlier and actually let me let me take a screenshot of this and i will open it up in paint so this is the one with the nano and let's run it with large and then we will compare that will be a fun experiment uh, exactly how much are we getting uh, when we are using the heavier version okay so here you can see uh, we do have can we yeah so here you can see we don't see the truck uh, we have some motorcycles the cars are limited here here we have more cars here we have less and here we have a red which is for a person here we don't and here there's another truck at the back which is green uh, we don't get that so yeah definitely we are getting more but is it correct or not <laughs> that is Yet to be seen so based on your requirement whether you want it fast or whether you want it highly accurate um, again all of these methods all of these versions they are good not in a very general sense but if you have a controlled environment for example you're detecting cars or you're detecting uh, pedestrians in, in a fixed environment with a fixed camera then yes it can be very useful you can have uh, certain limitations certain constraints some uh, certain constants that this il this will always be this you can add a mask that do not detect in these regions only detect in these regions and um, things like that it will definitely be useful to put it in your project so that is exactly what we are going to do first of all we are going to run it with our webcam and then later on we will try it with uh, different projects how we can implement this in real time so now in chapter number six we are going to run yolo with our webcam so let's see how we can do that so we are going to need the help of OpenCV in this case and uh, we are going to put bounding box ourselves manually so that it is easier for us to decide what to display and what not to display so what we'll do is first of all we'll go to uh, we'll go to new and directory and then we are going to write chapter six and chapter six is yolo with webcam so then we are going to right click and we are going to create a new python file and we will call it yolo webcam so first of all we are going to import ultralytics as we did earlier and we also have to import python so we will uh, not python opencv so we will write from ultralytics import yolo and then we will write uh, imports, imports CV2, and then we will also import uh, CV zone. So CV zone we uh, will be using to actually display all these um, what do you call detections. Uh, it will make it a little bit easier. You don't have to, but it will make a little bit easier so the first thing we will do we will create uh, the webcam object so we'll write cap equals uh, cv2 dot video capture so this is what i was referring to earlier so if you are not getting any suggestions so if you write dot video and you don't get any suggestions then it means you probably are using a newer version of python uh, of opencv so and this is the issue that we are getting with the newer versions so where is it open cv open cv 
there you go so open cv as you can see we are using version 4.60 Whereas 6.8 is the latest version, but still 6.8 has this issue. That's why we are using 6.0. So we will write uh, cv 2 video capture and the video capture ID. Basically, you have to give in the ID number for your webcam. I'm using multiple webcams, so I will give the ID number one because that is what I'm going to use. But if you are using only one webcam, if you don't have multiple webcams installed, then you should write zero instead of one. So I will write here one and then you can specify cap dot set. You are going to set the width and the height. So the width uh, basically is prop ID number three. So you can write 1280. This is the width and cap dot set. That is the prop ID number four. That is 720. So this is the height and we're going to set it at 720. So this is the basic idea. And again, if you wanted to, there's another one which is mostly used in webcam, 640 by 480. These dimensions are uh, commonly used. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Then we are going to write while true and we are going to write success and the image equals cap dot read. And then we are going to write cv2 dot im show. We want to show the image. So we will write image and img that is the image we want to show and cv2 dot wait key because we want to give it one millisecond delay so this should run our webcam by default so if we right click and run we should have our webcam running there you go so this is the webcam as you can see me uh, it's running live so we can close this and if you wanted to you can write 1280 by 640 and oh, not 640 720 my bad 1280 by 720 and that should work as well there you go so now you have uh, a bit more area to work with so again it's up to you which one you want to use so we'll keep it on this and let's go ahead and create our model so the model uh, as we have seen earlier if you go to yolo basics uh, here you can see this is how you can create your yolo model and then you can find the results like this so here we are going to write model equals uh, we are going to write yolo and then we have to give in the weights so the weights we are going to use nano for this purpose so we will go back we will write yolo yolo dash weights and then we will write the version so this is YOLO version 8 and nano. So YOLO version 8 and nano. So I wrote one by extra. So version 8 and nano dot PT. So here we will go down and we will write the results equals model. And we are going to give in our image and we are going to write stream equals true. Now, if you write stream equals true, it will use generators and that will be a bit more efficient than without it. So it is recommended to use stream equals true. So if we run this now, let's see what happens. So we should not get any errors. That's what we are trying to check. If we are getting any errors, it means we are headed in the wrong direction. There you go. We are not getting any error. So that is good. So now once we have the result, what we can do is we can check for individual bounding boxes and see how well it performs. So here, once we get the results, we are going to loop through them. So we are going to write for R in results. Uh, we are going to get the bounding box of each there's each of the results. So we will write here box is equals r dot boxes. And now we have to loop through the boxes. So we will write for box in boxes, we are going to find the x, y of each of the bounding boxes. So there are two methods. 
uh, you can use x y x y which means x1 y1 x2 y2 or x1 y1 and width and height so which format do you need it depends on you so here you can write box dot x y x y or you can write box dot x y width height so which one do you want so uh, i would uh, recommend x y x y because it will be easier to input directly to OpenCV. So we will write here x1, y1, then x2 and y2 equals this. And what we can do is we can print uh, these values. So we will copy these and we are going to simply print them. So let's see what do we get. So we are getting an error not enough values to unpack expected for got one uh, so it means they are just packed in sides uh, so what we need to do is we just need to get the first element of it so hopefully that will work out there you go so this is what we are getting so we are getting the value of 279 103 1038 and 7112 so again then we have multiple detections then we are getting two values so here we are getting x1, y1, x1, uh, x2, and y2. So these are the values that we are getting. So what we need to do is we need to convert them into integers so that we can actually use them. So we can copy this part and we can paste it and then we can uh, put it into integer, convert it into integer and integer and integer. There you go. So let's run it and see if it works. So there you go. Now we are getting the values. You can see here we are getting the actual values that we can use with OpenCV. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle to actually find out if we are uh, getting the correct bounding boxes or not. So here we will write cv2 dot rectangle rectangle and we will give in our image and then we have the points so x1 and y1 then we have the x2 and x2 and the y2 so these are the points that we'll give in and then we have the color so color let's put it um it's b so let's put it at zero green is let's 200 and zero or let's make it purple so 255 zero 255 that will make it purple okay then we have the thickness let's put it at three and yeah that's pretty much it so let's run it and see if it works And there you go so we are detecting so if i bring in my phone you will see there's a bounding box around it and it shows that it is working fine so um let's let's try a pen can it detect a pen yeah it detects a pen as well it detects the phone and let's try the remote it detects the remote as well but again we are not actually getting uh, the feedback of what exactly the class is and uh, how confident it is so we are going to detect those as well now uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier you can use a fancy rectangle as well uh, which we provide in cv zone package so in order to do that you can simply write cv zone dot uh, corner rectangle and you will give in the image and all you have to do is give in the bounding box. So you can write here uh, bounding box, B B B O X. So where is this bounding box coming from? Uh, this is actually X, Y width and height. So we can get that too. So we can write here a uh, bounding box, X, Y width height. And uh, this will give us the X1, Y1 will be the same. And then we will have the width and the height and then what we can do is we can put it in bounding box so bbox equals uh, this we'll convert it into integers um, and there you go so this will be width and this will be height 
there you go now this is a repetition so again we can use one of them we don't have to use both of them at the same time so let's put this one over here so this one and let's put this with it so you can use either one of them so not both of them at the same time because that would be weird we can remove that so this one is for open cv and this one is for cv zone uh, let's run that and see if it works and there you go we are getting something but it is wrong so why exactly is it wrong so we are getting x1 um what happened here so x1 y1 and then w and h so okay something seems wrong so let's try that um let's just get these values and we can subtract to get the width and height so the width and height equals x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1 and hopefully that will work out so let's open this up and we can remove this and here for the bounding box we can simply write x1 y1 and width and height let's try it this way hopefully it will work there you go so it works now so we have the green boxes and then we can also have uh, for example for the phone you can see it's a little bit fancier again you can change the colors uh, the colors of these edges you can change the color of the inner rectangle and all of that uh, all of this information is given here if you click on the control and click on corner rectangle here you will see uh, where is it is it corner rectangle there you go so it will show you this is the length and this is the color for the corner the color for the rectangle and the rectangle thickness and the thickness of the uh, corner and all of these details are given here so you can check here and based on that uh, you can apply this okay so this is good so the next step would be to actually get the confidence values and the class names so we don't have the class names of yet so we only are showing the bounding box so let's find out the confidence first so the confidence is conf equals bounding box conf zero so this is the confidence so let's print that out and see if it works so if we go down and there you go you can see the confidence values but we want it to be rounded so what you can do is you can use math so imports imports math and then over here you can change this value so here we can write math dot uh, you can write ceiling or floor it's up to you so seal uh, and that's it or we and based on what exactly do you want to round it off so we want to round it to two decimal places so we are going to multiply it by 100 and then we are going to divide it by 100 so that's the idea so if we check the confidence values now it will be two decimal places so hopefully that should be good and we are getting one because we made a mistake here it should be the bracket should be here so you are doing the ceiling for this and then you are dividing it by 100 there you go so now you're getting 0 0.94 so that is good uh, now we can display it so to display we are going to use cv zone 
Uh, now, what, what exactly are we going to display? We are going to display the confidence and the class name. So we need a, a box, a rectangle, on top of which we can display this. Because if we just display it on the image, it is not very clear uh, depending on the background. So if the background is in contrast, it will actually display well. If, our, if they are uh, pretty much the same color, it will fade away. So that's why we want a rectangle. And on top of the rectangle, we want a text. Now, uh, if we create a rectangle using OpenCV and then we put the text on it, then it won't be centered. Uh, if the text is bigger, it will move away, it will move out of the box and things like that. So in order to fix that, um, we have a function in CV zone that will create the rectangle. It will put it, uh, it will put the text on the rectangle and it will center it based on the length of the text. And all of this is done automatically. So we can write here CV zone cv zone dot uh, put text rect and we are going to give in our image and then we have to give in the text so the text let's put it an f string for now because later on we are going to add some stuff to it so the f string will contain the confidence for now and then we'll give in the position now the position should be the starting value of our x and y so it will be x1 and y1 but because y1 will bring it a little bit down we wanted to push it up a little bit so we can say minus let's say uh, 20 or 30 or 50 uh, let me check something like that so let's run that and see if it works now this will give us an issue and i will tell you what that is there you go. Now it's giving us 0 0.96. And if, if I bring this in 0 0.94, that's good. If I bring in my phone, there you go. If I push it up, it goes up. If I bring it down, it goes down. There you go. So if I go up a bit, there you go. So that's the idea. But here the problem is that if I go up, you can see the the text actually goes out um and that that is not what we want uh, we want it to display so what we can do is we can write here take the max whether it's zero or this value and take the max whether it's zero or this value so whichever one is bigger, because if it goes in minus, then use zero. So it will not go above that. It will stay within. So let's try that out. There you go. Mm, it doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, if we go here. Uh, if we go to the side, it, it's working on the side, but it's not working on the Y. Uh, because we already have a minus 20 in there. So let's remove the minus 20 and hopefully this will work better. Or, or what we can do is we can put here 20. So if we go up, let me just go like this. Yeah, it's not working very well. So let's try 20 or Y1. Yeah, now it's better. So maybe make it 35. So it doesn't go beyond that. There you go. So now it's actually showing us. So if I have this remote and if I push it up, the confidence level stays there, even though it's going out of uh, the image. There you go. So that's, that's good. That's good. Let's see the phone. Yeah, it's working fine. Okay. So this is good. Now what we need is the class. So we need to know what class are we detecting? Is it a person? Is it a car? Is it a bike? What exactly are we detecting? So this is based on the Coco data set. 
And what we can do is we can get the class names for that. So I've already created um, what do you call a list and you can get this list from our website. Again, you can download it for free. Now, if you don't want to do that, the other thing you can do is you can simply type it from here. So right now you can see it's showing the complete thing on the screen. So if you want to go ahead and simply type it out, you can type all these 80 classes. So person, bicycle, car, motorbike, airplane, blah, 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 and all of these. So it should be in a list called class names. So once we have that, we need to find the ID number. So if the ID number is zero, it will be a person. If the ID number is one, it will be a bicycle. ID number two is a car and so on. So what we need to do is we need to find the confidence, uh, sorry, the, the class. So here we found the bounding box. This is for bounding box. Let's write here bounding box. This here is for the uh, confidence. And now we are going to do it for the class name. So for the class name, what you have to do is you are going to use the same format. You will write CLS. You can't write class because, because you can't use class for obvious reasons. So here you will write class CLS and then box and you will write here CLS. So that will give you the class name. So let's print it out uh, or let's put it on the rectangle. So let's remove it here and we will put it directly on the rectangle. We will write here uh, CLS. We'll give it a space and then this. There you go. So this is for the confidence. This is for the class. And let's see if that works out. So right now it will give us the class ID. It will not give us the actual name because we are not referring it to our list. Once we refer it to our list, it will give us the name as well. So for now it will just give us it should give us id number zero so here you can see 0, 0.0 uh, it's decimal places i'm not sure why <laughs> but uh we will figure that out the phone is 67 and that's a very high class remote is 65 so what about the chair can you find the chair can you find the chair it's confused about the uh, about the chair Anyways, so what we have to do is instead of class, what we will write here, we'll write here class names, and then we will put in here class. But if you remember, it was um, a floating value. So we have to convert it into integer. So we'll put it here as integer. And then if we run this now, this time around, it should give us the class name as well. So if we open this up, here you go, person, 0.96 confidence if we move around uh, that's a suitcase I, i'm not sure why uh, so sometimes it's a chair and then we have the remote that's very good uh, then we have the phone the cell phone that's very good so that's the basic idea and let's see the pen oh it's actually a toothbrush <laughs> i didn't know that so it is actually detecting this as the toothbrush that's fine Okay, so uh, if you wanted to check it on a video, you can do that too. And if you wanted to make these um, names, these labels a bit smaller, uh, you can do that too. So here in put text rect, here you can write scale and you can give in, let's say 0 0.5. So that will squeeze everything down and it will make it smaller. Uh, this will be helpful in case you have a lot of detections. For example, you have a lot of cars on a highway or you have a lot of pe a lot of people being detected. So this will make it easier. So there you go. But then it's, it's a little bit harder to read. Uh, so you have to change, let's say we'll put 0 0.7. Then you also have to uh, change the threshold, uh, sorry, the thickness. The thickness, let's put it as 0 0.5. Actually, the thickness is not 0 0.5. Uh, if we check the default thickness, it is, uh, no, this is not, not the corner rect. Uh, where is put text rect? Put text rect is here. The default thickness is three. So let's put it as one. So if you put it as one, hopefully we'll be able to read it 
uh, even if it's a bit smaller, because we have uh, drastically reduced the scale from 3 to 0 0.7. So the thickness, well, I, I don't think we can go below 1. I'm not sure. So there you go. Now you can actually read person 0 0.9, 0 0.6. So if you bring in the remote, you can actually read it. So that's how you can uh, increase and decrease the scale for it. By default, it's 3 and 3. So it's up to you if you wanted to check that. Okay, so um, actually let's keep it there because we are going to try it with a video and videos, they usually are bigger. So let's put scale as one, just a little bit bigger. And you saw that the box actually scales up and scales down automatically. So that's the best part of this function. Okay, so let's try it with some videos. So what we will do is we will copy and we are going to paste our videos folder in object detection YOLO. So here we have some videos, bikes, cars, motorbikes, people, PPE2, PPE3. So all our, th these are different videos we are going to use throughout the course. So we have all of them in one folder. So here, instead of video capture one, let me copy that. And I will write here for web webcam. And here we will write for video. And we will remove for the webcam and for the video all we have to do is we have to point it to the correct path so here if we go back we will go to videos and in the videos uh, let's try let's try bikes bikes.mp4 and uh, this is the size and all that so in in case of the video you cannot actually set the size so let's put it here with the webcam like that so for the video that is good let's run it and see if it works there you go so we have a lot of people and we have bicycle we have person we have car it's a lot of detections we have traffic lights being detected as well so that's pretty good and then let's try with um, cars cars Again, you can try with different versions. So there you go. We have some cars being detected. Looks pretty good. And then we can try with motorbikes.mp4. There you go. So we have some cars being detected. We have motorbike. We have person. So those are some pretty good results. Uh, let's try it with the large version. Same video with the large version and see what happens. Uh, most probably it will be a lot slower. There you go. And uh, we, But we are getting better results in terms of detections. So that's good. Okay. And uh, then let's put it back to nano and the people. Let's try people. P E O P L E people and let's run that. There you go. So we are detecting people as well. And that's pretty good. So this is the basic idea of how you can use webcam with the YOLO version 8 uh, to detect these different objects. And uh, this is quite an efficient way to do it. So later on, we are going to use it. So right now we are actually using it with CPU. So that's why when we go to the large version, it actually is very slow. So in the next chapter, we are actually going to use the same code, but we are going to run it with the GPU. So it will be much faster than this. So let's go ahead and try that out. Now in the previous chapter, we saw that how we can run uh, YOLO version 8 with our webcam. And we uh, we took the help of OpenCV to actually do it. Now the problem that we saw that it is using a CPU to actually run all the computation. And while I do have a very good CPU, which is Core i9 and it is 12th generation, it is still unable to handle real-time information when it comes to the large version. When we are using nano version, it's fine. But when it comes to large or medium version, then it lags very much. So as you can see here, if we run it, right now we are uh, detecting a, 
a video and then we are we are running a video with yolo version 8 large model and you can see the lag is very much so it takes almost 300 milliseconds to run an inference so only three frames per second you can say so that's not very good so what exactly can we do we can use our gpu to actually run it and hopefully the gpu will give us real-time results so how exactly can we run a gpu so first of all you need to have nvidia's gpu you can check the gpu level on their website the compute capability and based on that it will perform very good or very bad based on how powerful it is now when it comes to installations there's a lot of installations required to run the gpu but it is all well worth it because once once you actually get it running you will be able to run your gpu and you will be able to run your uh, yolo version 8 in real time and that is something that is very good to know so i've listed down everything in detail so let's go ahead and follow those steps the first thing you will need is visual studio so you have to install visual studio this is the requirement for the cuda toolkit so this is the CUDA, uh, cuda toolkit so this is the requirement of this kit so you have to install this first so visual studio but what exactly do we need in visual studio uh, once you run it you have to download the community version so whichever one is the latest one you can download that but then the the biggest thing that we need is the development with c plus plus so you will need that to install that as well so make sure you run uh, install it so once we have that then you have to go ahead and uh, this will take a while because it's uh, quite a few gbs so it will take a while to download and install once that is done you will go to the official nvidia's drivers so for example i have the nvidia's um, rtx 3080 ti so i will select the geforce in geforce i will select the 30 series and then geforce rtx 3080 ti and I'm using Windows 10, so I will select that. You will select the studio driver and English, and you will search, and you are going to download it. Now, this is a simple wizard. You have to click next, 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 and it should install quite easily. Once that is installed, you will go ahead and install CUDA Toolkit. So CUDA, uh, not CUDA, CUDA Toolkit, you can install by going to their website. So this is for, uh, for the NVIDIA developer. You will click on Windows, then x86-64, then you will click on 11, and then you will download the local version. So I have, I believe, CUDA 11.6. Let me check. So once you download, it will install, and I will check my version as well. So it will install in program files. And if you go down NVIDIA GPU uh, Computing Toolkit, and if you go to CUDA, this is 11.5. So I have 11.5 uh, based on the version, uh, the latest version you can download as well. So here it's 11.5. Uh, we will open that up and you can see, again, this will be an installer. It will be a wizard. You have to click next, 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 install it in C. And in C, this is where you will find all the files. So keep this folder open because next we are going to install CUDA DNN, which is which stands for Deep Neural Networks. CUDA Deep Neural Networks. So again, you have to go click on download uh, the CUDA DNN. And this will need uh, what do you call the registration on their website. So make sure you have registered and it is free to download. So just make sure that you have registered and it will uh, let you download uh the cuda dnn so once you download that this is what you will get so make sure the versions are compatible so right now this is for 11.5 which i installed as the toolkit so i have to download it for 11.5 uh, the cuda dnn so this is what you will get so if we open up our folder to install this all you have to do is you have to open up your folder here so you will see here you have a bin folder so this is the CUDA toolkit I don't know why it's so hard to pronounce this so this is the CUDA toolkit so this is that and this is the DNN so if you go to bin 
here you have a bin folder, here you have a bin folder. Open up bin and open up bin here and copy all of these files and paste it here. So just drag and drop. So I have already done that. So it will ask me to do it again. I will not do that again. So then you will go back. Then you will go back and you will go back here. We have already done the bin. Then you will go to include. So in include, again, you will open include here. Copy all these files, drag and drop them here. So in the main folder like that. So then you will go back and then you will go to lib. And inside lib, you will see all these files, but here you will not paste them directly. You will go to x64 and over here, you are going to paste all these. So drag and drop all these over here. So this way it will install your CUDA toolkit along with the CUDA deep neural networks, CUDA DNN. So this is basically the installation. And one last thing you have to do is you have to go to your environmental variables so you will click on edit system variables and here you will go to environment variables and over here you will go to CUDA path 11.5 so this is the version that I have and you will make sure that it points to the correct directory so if you remember we had it in program files NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit CUDA and then version 11.5 so make sure this and this they are pointing to the right path so uh, if they are pointing then it's fine if they are not, type it in, make sure they are in the correct path. So you hit OK and that is it. So now the, the drivers and the CUDA toolkit and the CUDA deep neural network is installed. But there is one more step. We do need to install PyTorch, which is compatible with CUDA. So here uh, you can see in the requirements, we have already installed Torch. But now we have to install the torch, which is compatible with uh, the GPU or with CUDA. So how can you do that? We can go to their website. So this is the PyTorch website and uh, this is how we can install. So we are using the stable version for Windows. We are going to use pip to install and we are installing it on Python and we are installing for CUDA 11.6 and this is the command that we need to run so we are going to copy that again i will share this command uh, so that it's easier for you to install so you will copy that and here at the bottom you are going to go to terminal now this is very important because some of you might make this mistake and it is very frustrating if you make this mistake make sure you are not in local click on this down arrow and select command prompt because if you are at local, it will install it globally. We want to install it in this virtual environment. So you have to go to the command prompt and here you can see it's installing it in the virtual environment. So here we are going to paste our link and we are going to press OK or we are going to hit enter. So this will take a while because I have done this already. Uh, it has all these files archived uh, in the cache. So that's why it is uh, able to install this very quickly. Otherwise, it will take a while to actually install all of these. So once it is done, we can go back and we can go to, we can close all of these. And here in the webcam, we can right click and we can run YOLO. So if it's actually using the GPU, then it will write here GPU. So right now it's not actually showing the GPU. So it means there is something wrong. Uh, it did not install it properly. So if we go to file settings and interpreter, if we go to uh, the torch over here, it is using the same torch that we had earlier. So it it's probably not using it properly. So what we can do is we can uninstall just to make sure and we can uninstall the torch audio and the torch vision we can uninstall those we'll press ok and then we'll go to our terminal and then we will run the command again
so again you can see it is using the cached otherwise it is quite a big file it's almost 2.4 gbs so it will take a while to download and install uh, i think what happened earlier was that all the requirements were already satisfied the torch was there vision was there so it didn't actually uh, reinstall uh, it, it didn't install anything so i believe that's what happened so you need to uninstall and install again so it is currently installing so let's see how it works so it is saying that requires a later version of OpenCV. we are using this um, i believe it's, it should be fine so uh, otherwise it has installed so let's run that and see if we are getting so it is updating uh, that's why it's not running let's run that again there you go so now you can see it says ultralytics yolo python blah 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 cuda 0 nvidia geforce uh, 3080 ti so this means now it's not using the cpu it's actually using the gpu and if we open up there you go now it's lighting fast so it is using the gpu Earlier, it was using the CPU and it was dead slow, but now it's using the GPU. And uh, remember, we are using the large version for this demonstration and still it is running real time. So that is very good. It means the GPU has been running properly and it has accelerated um, our video, our inference, and that's how it's running. So right now the inference is 10.5. So 10 milliseconds. Earlier, the inference was 300 milliseconds. So that is a difference of 30x. So that is a very big, big difference uh, when we are using the GPU. So that's great. And uh, again, if you run into any issues, go back and check the video again. Follow through the steps one by one and it should work fine uh, at the end. So again, it's a big difference. So it's well worth trying this. And if it runs properly, you will have a much faster system that will be running YOLO in real time. Do you want to implement your computer vision ideas to solve real world problems? or upgrade your resume by enhancing your computer vision skills, then the computervision.zone is the perfect platform for you. CVZone is a one-stop computer vision platform with over 100,000 users with courses sold in over 80 different countries. If you want to commercialize your computer vision ideas, then the computer vision web development course is the perfect course for you. Here you will learn the basics of web development and computer vision as well as how to integrate them to solve real world problems like customer engagement, car counter, face attendance, shirt size measurement and a lot more. Advanced Stone Programming is another great course that focuses on the practical implementation. Here you will learn the basics of drone programming as well as advanced concepts like face following, body following, gesture control and a lot more. If developing mobile apps is your thing, then check out our Computer Vision mobile apps course. Here you will learn the basics and create several apps including object detection, augmented reality, face detection, document scanner and a lot more. The best part is that you will create a single app that will work both on iOS and Android. If you are passionate about integrating hardware with software, then check out our Computer Vision Arduino course. Here you will learn the basics along with amazing projects such as conveyor belt assembly, face tracking, lamp gesture control, face door lock and a lot more. The Computer Vision Game Development is another great course where fun meets programming. Here you will learn to create games such as Fruit Ninja, Balloon Pop, Squid Game, Cookie Cutter, all using the latest computer vision techniques. Not only that, you will learn to compile your awesome game to an .exe file to make it accessible to all. You can also learn to implement computer vision on embedded devices with our Computer Vision with Jetson Nano course. Here you will learn the basics of Jetson Nano and computer vision along with creating exciting projects like lane following robot, eye tracking, object following and a lot more. All these courses have a clear path from basics to advanced with maximum knowledge in a short amount of time. So check out the links in the description to get started with your computer vision journey today. So now that we understand how to run YOLO and how can we run using GPU, we are going to create some projects out of this. So the first project that we are going to do is a car counter. So within a video, we are going to count the number of cars that pass a certain region. 
So to do that, we'll first create a new folder. We'll go to, oh, not a new file. We'll go to new and we'll click on directory. And here we are going to write project one. And the name of this project, we are going to call it car counter. So within our car counter, we are basically going to copy the code of YOLO webcam. So we will copy YOLO webcam and we are going to place it in the project, project one. So here we will call it car dash, let's write it capital car dash counter dot by. So we will have the exact same code that we were running earlier. And all we have to do is we have to make sure it's running with the videos. We can remove the webcam part and we are going to run cars.mp4. So we will have a lot of things done and set it up already while we start this project. So right now you can see it's running on GPU. It's using 3080 Ti and there you go. We are getting the cars and we are getting their uh, bounding box information, their class, their confidence. And you can see uh, when, when it's too small, it's not actually putting the corner rectangle properly. So what we can do is, first of all, let's fix that. So here, uh, where is it? Corner rectangle. Uh, what we can write is the length equals, I think by default, it's 30. Yeah, it's 30 by default. Uh, let's put it at 15. So this is the length of the corner. So the green part that you see, that is what we are referring to. So we can make it smaller. Yeah, so there you go. Now it's smaller. So the green part. And if you wanted to, you can even reduce it further. You can make it like say five, then it will be really small. Uh, let's see how that works out. There you go. Uh, it's too small, maybe eight or nine, let's say. There you go. I think this is better. Okay, so we have the cars coming in. We have the rectangle on top of it. We can actually make it smaller so that um, we can see it better. So let's make it 0 0.3 or let's say 0 0.6. And the thickness is still one. We, can, we cannot reduce it further, I believe. So there we have it. Now we have it smaller, but uh, you can see the 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 title itself is smaller, but there is some offset around the region, which is quite huge. So we can reduce that too. So there is a very there's a variable called offset, uh, called offset, and by default, I believe it's 15. Do we have an offset here? No, the bounding box. Um, yeah, put text rect, we have offset as 10. So let's make it five or let's put it three because we don't want a huge offset. We want the cars to be visible. There you go. So now it's much better. You can see we have the offset and we can see the cars coming in. It looks good. Okay, so this is the basic idea that we have these cars coming in now, the thing is that it might not be a car, it might be a truck, but then what exactly are we trying to find? So if you just want to do cars, you can add a if statement that if it's a car, then detect it. Otherwise, we can find out what are the vehicles that we want to find. For example, in our case, let's say we will detect the car, we'll detect motorbike, we'll detect bus, and then we will detect truck. So these are the four categories that we are going to detect. So if we go to our cars video let's open that up there you go so if you go a little bit back there you go i believe this will be detected as a truck this is a car that's fine this is a motorbike so we want to detect that too and then later on we also have uh, yeah i believe this will be detected as truck as well and this should be detected as a bus. So we have these different categories and we want to detect all of them. So in that case, first of all, we have to give an if statement that only detect these categories. So here, what we can do is, we can write here current class equals uh, class names at CLS. 
So this will give us the class name. So over here as well, instead of writing this, we can write current class. And over here we can write if the current class equals car, then only we are going to display it. So in case of motorbike and in case of the truck, it will not get detected. And what we can do is we can put a zero here. So every time we press the keyboard button, it will go forward. Otherwise, it will not go forward by its own. So there you go. Let's, I will keep pressing and let's move forward. And here you can see it is detecting it, but it is not displaying the confidence and the uh, class value over here as well. It's not because we are displaying the rectangle. The rectangle is displayed here. The rectangle is if you wanted to remove that as well, we can do that. But right now it is not displaying the confidence and the class values. So that is what we are trying to do. So here it's not detecting it. So it means the motorbike is not being detected. And then uh, here the truck, as I mentioned, it's not being detected. Then let's move on to the bus. So as you can see, the bus is detected here. You can see it is detected, but it is not classifying it because uh, we said that only when it's a car. So this is a bus and this is a truck. It's not detecting these two because we did not clarify. We did not define them. So here we can say, and we can also put the confidence level. So if the confidence level is very low, then you should not display. So here we can write and confidence is greater than at least 0 0.3. So that's what we are writing here, that if the confidence is greater than 0 0.3 and it's a car, then only you can detect it. So we have four categories. So we will write for all four of them. So we'll write here, it's a car or it's a truck uh, or it's a bus. or uh, it's a motorbike. So let's go down. Or it's a motorbike. We have motorbike, right? Yeah, we have motorbike. So car, motorbike, uh, bus, and truck. So these are the ones that we're detecting. Rest of them we will not detect and we will not even put the rectangle around them. So we can pr bring it down here in the if statement and we can paste it here. So let's run it and see how it works. So now it will detect only those. So here you can see it was detecting something here. It was detecting probably a traffic sign, but now it's not detecting that because it's not part of it. And here you can see it says motorbike at 0 0.56 or 59% uh, confidence so 59 percent confidence so here you can see car um, this is detected as a truck this is also detected as a truck so then we'll move forward and we'll wait for the bus whether it's detected as a bus or a truck so this is truck as well and this is truck as well then there you go we have the truck so Earlier it was detecting as a truck, but here it's detecting as a bus. So actually this gives us a good uh, point that uh, this point is actually where most of the cars will be classified properly. At the very end, it might not classify properly. At the very back, it might not classify properly. But at the middle, it should detect and classify properly. So that is the region where we should count. So this is where it gives us the idea. So if you're trying to find that position, try to loop through these uh, images and try to find that correct position where the detections are correct. So th that's how you can tell oh, the good position, where the good position is. Okay, so that's done. So we have the cars now, but as you can see, we have it in the wrong places as well. So for example, we don't care about what's happening here. If we have some counts over here, it will interrupt our count. For example, if a car is come, uh, going out from here, we don't want to detect that. We just want to detect at this point. Uh, 
uh, on the main road so you have to constrain your values so to get good results otherwise if it's completely open it's not constrained at all uh, you might not get the uh, best results okay so how can we constrain this how can we make sure that only this region uh, you detect uh, what do you call uh, uh, the cars or whatever the, uh, the object is so once one thing you can do which is very simple and that you can do within OpenCV or within the spy charm environment is that you can create a rectangle so you can crop this image you can create this rectangle here and you can say okay only detect in this and how can you say that you will crop that image and that image you are going to send it to your detector but that is not a very good idea because the shape over here is not rectangular or not square so what we want is the exact shape so how can we do that now it is very simple we will go to canva.com and we are going to create a new design and in this new design this design is 1280 by 720 so this is the size of our video and that is exactly the size of the design and then we are going to import this video so here this is the video you can see it's the exact same one now what you will do is you will resize it so that it is the correct size it fills up the whole screen and then you are going to press r that will give you a rectangle so with this rectangle what you have to do is you have to determine the region so we are going to rotate it and we are going to align it with this uh, dotted line this lane we are going to align it with this and for the other one we are going to align it with this lane so let's go ahead and do that so we will align we'll try to align it as much as we can so something like that something like that so there you go and you can move it around like that there you go so this is the first one and the second one we are going to basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a mask so that it only views in that mask region so we are going to put another image here there you go another rectangle here and then this area again is very small and it's not very useful so we are going to remove that as well so we'll create another rectangle and we'll put it over here something like that and at the bottom as well we don't want to detect so we'll create another one and we will put it here something like that so uh, depending on which region you are trying to uh, detect you can create this so the, then you're going to select all of them and you are going to change the color to black you can do that in the beginning as well and then we are going to extend it so that only that region is visible there you go that's how simple it is that's how you can create this mask and all you have to do now is click on the video and delete it that will give you the white region so then you can simply share download and you don't need transparent background you don't need to compress uh, all you have to do is you have to download the image uh, once it's downloaded we are going to import it so here is the downloaded file we are going to bring it to our project so project one car counter and we are going to name it mask.png so if we open that up in projects let's close the others so here mask.png this is our mask so we can remove that and now what we have to do is we have to overlay these images so that only this region is detected and uh, we only find the cars within these regions so now what we need to do is we need to import this mask so here at the bottom we are going to say mask equals cv2.im read and we are going to read from our image so we will write mask.png and once we have that uh, and we get our webcam image or we get our video image then we are going to overlay uh, the mask on our main image we are going to use a bitwise operation of and that will give us only that region so we are going to uh, we are going to say image region equals cv2 dot bitwise and and we are going to give in our image and we are going to give in our mask 
and this will give us the img region and uh, we are going to display that image region so let's copy that and paste it here so we'll write it as region and we will write image region so let's run that and see if we get that region as well and make sure they are of the same size if they're not of the same size it will not work uh, right now i know it's 1280 by 720 that's why we have created the image of 1280 by 720 of the mask otherwise it will not work so there you go this is your mask this is the image region and as you can see it will only detect in this region that's what we need now so we want to detect only in this part actually the mask is wrong um it's it's not perfect because this car is is not visible so this is not correct something is wrong uh, let's go back to canva and let's undo yeah this is not correct we need to go a little bit higher there you go i guess this is a better representation there you go so then we are going to delete this so now it is our new mask then we are going to download and then we are going to delete this previous mask and we are going to drag in our new mask and we will call it mask mask.png and then we are going to run it again and hopefully this time around we will not face the same issue okay so this is our image and this is our mask there you go so if we play it that seems fine to me yeah that's good okay so now we will send only this image to our system so in terms of computation it will be more efficient as well so instead of image we will send image region that's how simple it is so let's run that and there you go so based on our image region as you can see only this area is being detected as cars so within this region we are detecting cars behind it we are not getting it on the side we are not getting it so only in the middle in the specified region we are getting the detections so if i play it once it reaches that region it detects it as a car or a bike and all that so that's good as you can see it looks good yeah okay so now that we have a specified region and we can see all the cars being detected now we need to count them so in order to count we need to have a certain region that this is the line when it passes this line we will consider it as counted so we need to know that second thing we need is an actual tracker so right now what we are doing is we are detecting the cars but in the next frame we do not know where the car has gone so what we need is a tracking id so if we detect a car in the first frame we need to know where did that car go in the next frame so that we can assign it the same id so in the first one if it's id number one in the second frame it should remain id number one it should not go to id number two or three or four or five so this is basically a tracking problem so within the consecutive frames we need to find out where is our object moving to so that we can assign them unique ids so to count we need to find first a tracker so the tracker that we are going to use is called sort and you can find it on github and here you can see it's by abby welly and thanks to him and the contributors who actually created this tracker and it is very easy to use and here they are uh, showing us how to use as well so all we need is this sort.py so if we click on that this is the code what we will do is we will download this file uh, of course this file will also be available uh, with our uh, zip file so you can find it there or you can come to github and download it from here so we also have some requirements uh, filter pi 
scikit uh, image and lap so these requirements are already fulfilled because we added that in our requirements as well so filter by scikit image and lap so these are the ones that we have already installed so what we need to do is we need to bring in the file so let me copy that and i will bring it here into our project one and this is uh, a simple sorter uh, a simple online and real-time tracker uh, copyright alex beverly you can see here so <clears throat> this is all the code we are not going to do anything uh, to this all we have to do is we need to know how to use it so here to import we are going to write import sort or actually what we can do is we can write from sort from sort import everything so it will be easier for us to work with so this is what we are going to do and then we are going to create an instance for the sorter so what we will do is sorting or let's call it tracking tracker equals sort and then we have to give in the maximum age so what is the limit of the number of frames uh, that it is gone and we still recognize it within that region so if uh, id number one is lost how many frames do we wait to uh, detect it back so the higher uh, the longer it will wait for it to come back so maximum age let's put it as 20 uh, minimum hits let's put it as two and then we have the iou threshold again th these are parameters that you can change but they have default values as well if you go to sort uh, maximum age is one which is really bad uh, it's, it's not really useful then we have minimum hits as three and the iou threshold as 0 0.3 so i will i will keep them the same uh, let's put it as three and iou threshold is 0 0.3 so again um, this we have explained in the theory part so if you're not familiar with this go ahead and check that out uh, this is the intersection over union threshold to find how good the overlap of the bounding boxes is so uh, these are the values you can uh, play around with them and see what type of uh, results you get now in order to run this it's very very simple all you have to do is you have to write tracker dot update and that's it so you need to update it with a list of detections so we will write here detections now we need to find these detections which we already have by the way because here we have the bounding boxes but what we need to do is we need to put them in an array we need to put them in a list and we need to make sure that the format is exactly what this requires so what format does it need we don't know we can go into the sort and we can check here so uh, in the update it says this is a numpy empty so by default it's a numpy array of 0 by 5 so this is the dimension so we have five values so uh, the format is x1 y1 x2 y2 and the score so this is what we have to feed in and what do we get out of it we get a rect concatenated um, maybe it's not mentioned here what we get as the output or the return is x1 y1 x2 y2 and then we also get the main thing which is the id number so that is what we need so uh, let's just copy that so oh, where is the update here so our detections by default if we don't have any detections this should be our type so we should have a numpy list so right after we get the results we are going to create a list uh, or an array of detections detections and this will be empty uh, 0 by 5 so that is the idea and once we have that then we are going to once we detect it as a car or a truck or a bus or a motorbike and the confidence is greater than 0 0.3 then only we are going to save it to our detection list or detection array so then what we are going to write we are going to write that our current array 
equals numpy dot array and we are going to give in the uh, x1 x1 y1 x2 and y2 and we will also give in the confidence value so these are the five values that it requires and then what we have to do is <clears throat> So normally, if we have a list, what we do is we write dot append. So if you want to add it to uh, the list, you just write append. It goes down, it goes down, it goes down like that. But in uh, in a NumPy array, we don't write append. Uh, what we do is we stack. So we will do a vertical stack. That's how simple it is. So we'll write detections equals NumPy dot vertical stack. And we have to give in uh, our current detection, uh, the old detections that we already had and the current array, the current array. So we stack them together. So that's the idea. So once we have these detections, now we can simply send it to the updates. And again, this update is not dependent on what did we detect new because we need to keep updating it from the previous times as well. So we already have an empty one and it will keep updating. So here we have the detections and then we need to get the results of this. So we can write here results uh, for the tracker equals this. Results of the tracker equals this. And then we can loop through the results of this tracker. So uh, you can write, for example, for results in results tracker we are going to get the x1 y1 and the x2 and the y2 and the id so which is the most important thing that we get the id and that is basically the result so let's print out the result actually we can print out this as well uh, later on we are going to use this that's why we are writing it like that so let's run that and see if we get something. Hopefully there are no errors. Um, otherwise we are heading in the wrong direction. Okay, there you go. So now we have our three IDs, perfect. So we have ID number one, ID number two, ID number three. Let's press space bar and then again, it is moving on to the next one and you can see it's the same ID. Then it moves on to the next one and you can see the fourth one has come up and it has increased the ID. There you go. And then the fifth one comes in and it shows. So it couldn't find probably uh, the, the other two and that's why it's showing only three. Okay, so to, in order to understand this better, what we are going to do, uh, we are going to display these ID numbers so it will become easier. So instead of uh, showing it here, or let's do both. We'll show it here and we will show it here as well. Um, we'll keep the thickness of this bigger. So we are talking about the rectangle. So the rectangle thickness here, so rectangle thickness equals, let's say five. And for the other one, we will make it a little bit smaller so we can see what is the actual detection and what does it think, where is the tracking part? So how well the tracker detects the bounding box. So uh, let's let's try to find that. So what we'll do is, uh, again, what uh, we will simply use these values. Are they integers? Yeah, they seem to be integers. So what we can do is we can simply uh, create our corner rectangle. So we will write here uh, CV zone dots corner rectangle image, and we have to give in the bounding box information. Uh, so the bounding box information uh, will be like we did here. Let's copy that. And uh, actually, let's copy this corner rectangle because <laughs> we're lazy. So there you go. So X1, Y1, width and height. And this time around, we'll put the rectangle as, uh, let's say, 2. And we will put it as blue, the color. So the color for the rectangle, let's put it as uh, 255, 0 and 0. And let's show the ID as well. So 
here we are showing using uh, put text rect right so we will copy that and we will paste it here and instead of confidence and current class we are going to display id it didn't show oh the i is capital my bad so this here why did i put i capital let's put it small id like that okay so id and yeah that's fine and the positioning is x1 y1 so x1 y1 is already bugged like it's something is already there we have the confidence and all that actually let's remove that because we know already we have the classes and all that uh it's car or boss or whatever so we can remove that and now we'll get the id instead of that okay so let's run that and hopefully we'll get some good results so expected sequence length two got four uh what is happening here um so it detected something then it said corner rectangle we have an issue image color rt open cv by argument rectangle <clears throat> expected length two got four okay um So we are getting an error here the corner rectangle uh, why are we getting an error here uh, let me check the corner rectangle color R and color C RT or is it TR it's RT yeah RT and is this uh, uh, let's let's print out print out x1 I just want to make sure that x1 is actually an integer and not a floating value because if it is then we have a problem there you go that's why yeah that's the issue so we have to do the same thing we did earlier uh, we have to do this we have to convert them into integers there you go so let's run that and hopefully it will be fine now there you go so now it's showing us okay the ids are very small let's make them bigger so uh, put text rect id max is this and that scale let's put it as two and thickness let's put it as three offset let's put it as 10. so it will be big values we can clearly see what's going on there you go uh point ah hit the point so id we need to convert the id into integer as well so let's just do it here integer id okay so there you go so this is id1 id2 id3 now is the moment of truth so if we go to the next one these ids should remain same if they flip around it means it's not tracking it's only detecting so if i press space bar and there you go it's the same so if i press spacebar again again it's the same so one two three four if i keep pressing there you go so the four was lost but it kept it uh it brought back the four from where it left off and you can also see the blue line the blue line is basically what the tracker is detecting and the purple one is what the detector or the yolo is detecting so if we keep going forward, you can see this is now five and this one is nine. Now, this is not an issue because if it doesn't go to five, it might have detected some wrong um, IDs. But as long as uh, the ID remains the same, if nine remains nine, then it's fine because we will have a line after which we cross, we will detect it or we will count it. So that's fine. So there you go it's 14 is 14 12 is 12 18 is 18 19 is 19 20 is 20 uh, 23 is 23 24 is 24 and that's all good so we can make a line here we can make a line here and whenever that line crosses whenever that id crosses that line we are going to detect it as a count now uh, how can we do that it's very simple 
all we have to do is we have to first of all create the line so we are going to write here that our line equals so this value uh, should be uh, actually there's image region coming here let's remove that because we don't need that anymore now this line uh, I have checked the values already so we are going to put that uh, let's call it limits let's call it limits instead and then we are going to write here 423 uh, 297 673 and 297 so these are the limits and using these limits uh, we are going to create a line so this line let's uh, draw it after the tracker <laughs> so here we'll write cv2.line and we'll give in the image and then we have to give in the points so uh, the points are basically limits at zero and limits at one then uh, the second point will be limits at zero uh, sorry limits at two and uh, limits at three and then what do we need then we need the color so the color let's put it as red so it will be uh, zero zero bgr so 255 and then we have the thickness let's put it as five and that should be good so if we run this now we should have a line right in the middle of our road so there you go so this is our line if these ids if any of these cars they cross this line then it will be detected as um what do you call detection actually what we can do is we can extend it to the left a little bit because uh, there's a gap here so let's go over here to the limits and in the uh, x we can make it let's say 400 we'll move back 20 pixels 23 to be exact yeah now it's perfect so now it should be fine uh, now what we need to do next is uh, le let's remove the the detection part so we don't need to draw the uh, the rectangles when we are detecting only for the tracker so here the corner rectangle we can remove that so now it will only show us the blue ones there you go now it's only showing us the blue ones actually i like I, I like the purple color better let's make it purple uh 255 and make this 255 as well so now the the rectangles will be purple there you go so yeah i like that better so uh the next step is to find the center point so once we have those center points, we need to check if that center point actually touched this line. If it touched the line, then we are going to say it was a, uh, it was a count. So that's the idea. So how can we find this? This is our results. We have the X, we have the Y, we have the width, we have the height, we have everything. All we need to do is we need to find the center. So we will call it CX and cy this is the center x and the center y and how can we find it it will be x1 uh, plus the width divided by 2 and it will be y1 plus the height divided by 2 so just to make sure that we are headed in the right direction we can draw it cv2 dot circle and we'll give in the image we will give in the cx and the cy and then we are going to give in the radius uh, let's give it five i don't know why <laughs> i'm giving everything five today so then we'll give in the color two five five zero and two five five purple again and uh, the thickness let's put it as cv2 dot filled so we want it filled completely so just to make sure that uh, the circles are at the correct position we are going to draw them and there you go so here you can see the circles and as soon as this circle um, 
actually falls in this region, we are going to count it as detected one. There you go. So how can we do that? We can write that if we need to check the limit of the X and we need to check the limit of the Y. Now the limit of the X is straightforward. We have starting from here, ending till here. It should be within this region. That's simple enough. So we can write that the limits at zero, this is our first limit and the limits uh, at one, no, at two, this is the second limit. So X and X, these are the two limits. So the first one is 400. The second one is 673. So that's the idea. So we are going to say that if CX is in between that and CY is in between what limit? Now, we don't want to say if CY equals uh, the exact value uh, of our limit. No, we don't want to say that because this is just a single value. The height is a single value, 297. So we don't want to say if the value is exactly 297, then detect it as a count because sometimes uh, uh, the car may be fast and it might not touch that uh, pixel value. So putting it one as one pixel value might be a problem. So what we need to do is we need to create a region. So this is our line. We will have this region can you see? Yeah. So you will have this region in which if it lies, then it is detected as a count. So what we can do is we can simply write uh, that limits at zero, uh, no, at one plus 20 or for this instance, minus 20. And for the next one, we can say plus 20. So if, it's, if it falls in that region, then only it will detect it as detected. So then we are going to say that total count plus equals one. And we didn't define total count, so we will write here, after tracking, we will write here, uh, total count equals zero. So total count plus equals one. And all we have to do is now we have to show the total count. So let's copy this CV zone function. Um, uh, we'll put it on the image. We will put, uh, we will write count and colon, and then we will write total count. Uh, it's already integer, so we don't need to worry about that. And, um, uh, we will give in the value of x as, um, let's say, 50 and y as, let's say, 50 as well. So 50, 50, and the rest we will keep at default. Uh, what happened? Okay, so let's run that. There you go. So the total count right now is zero because nothing passed that region. So if we keep pressing and there you go, now it entered that region and it counted as one, but now you will see an issue. If I press again, it counted it as two because it is still in that region uh, because it's not just a single line. It's a region where it lies. So because it's already there, it's counted it as two. Now, if we make this region very small, it might now it might not count it at all because it's very low. But if it make it, if we make it very big, then it it will have multiple counts. So we need to have a balance. First of all, we need to have the balance, and the second thing that we do need is we need to check if this ID is already counted or not. If it's already counted, we will not add it to the counter. That's how we will fix this issue. Because if I run it again. At the same point, it has counted three times. So that's not good. Okay, so how can we do that? Instead of making it a variable, we will make it a list. Uh, I'm talking about the total count. So instead of making total count a variable, we'll make it a list. And in that list, we will put IDs. So one, two, five, eight, nine, things like that. So then whenever we detect a new count, 
we will check if that id is already present we will not count it if it's there we will not count if it's not there we will add it okay so how will it look like so total uh, count we will make it a list and then we will go down and here we will say total count dot append and we are going to append the value of uh, the id okay but how can we check if it's already there or not in the total count we will check we will write if uh, the total count dot count of the id equals zero then do this now what does this mean so basically we are telling it to find the number of times when we write dot count it means count the number of times this id is present in this list so for example if it was five here it will count the number of times five is available here if five is not available it will be zero if there were two fives it will be one oh sorry two <laughs> and then if there is no five it will be zero so this is what we are saying so we are saying if this id is not already present then total count dot append id so this time it should be uh, correct but now it is a list it is not an actual value that we can just write here so all we have to do is we have to find the length of this list so that will be the total count so let's stop that and run it again and this time around if we click this is count is one now if i go to the next frame it should not count there you go it didn't count if i go again to the next frame it should not count didn't count now it should count because that's the second id then it should count third id fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and so on so if you if you see that some of the detections are missing uh, what you can do is you can increase this value you can make it 30 because right now uh, we have another check that is checking uh, whether it's a duplicate or not so we don't have to worry about that and uh, the second thing we can do is we can change the color of this line uh, we can change the color of this line so that whenever it's detected something it turns green so it's an indication that it had a count so we can print it uh, maybe here at the end or or we can simply print it again in red color I know it's it's a weird way to do this but you can do this uh, you can just simply print it again and instead of uh, red uh, we'll print, print it as green so it's basically overlaying on top of it okay There you go so if we run this now at this point it is detecting as a count because it's within that region and then it's detecting maybe it's too early okay maybe it's too early let's uh, reduce this to 20 back or let's put it as 15 and let's put this as 15 as well Yeah, I think that's better. Two, three, four, five, six. That's correct. Then seven. That's correct. Uh, then we have eight. That's correct. Nine. This will be 10. This will be 11, 12, 13, 14. So it should be 14 till here. Uh, then 15, 16. It should be 16 when it crosses these all. 16. That's correct then 17 18 19 17 18 uh, that was 19 then 20 21 it should be 21 after this this is 22 okay this is getting confusing that's why we have the computer to actually find it for us so what we can do now is we can go down and we can put it as one and let's see the magic happen so there you go 
it's really fast and it's detecting all those counts and and of course it's using the gpu that's why it's so fast 62 63 64 75 blah 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 <laughs> so that's good so um so now everything seems to work fine but what we can do next is add a little bit of graphics so that it looks a little more appealing so i have a graphics file here Again, you can find it on our website uh, within the zip folder. It's free to download. Just go ahead and download. So this is the graphics.png. We are going to overlay it on our uh, main video, and then we are going to display the numbers on this. So how can you do that? We are going to uh, read this file. We are going to say image graphics equals cv2.im read. Now, the reason we are uh, importing it uh, within the while loop is because if you don't do that, the graphics quality will be really bad over time. It will uh, be, it will give very bad results. So you have to import it every single iteration. So graphics.png and we will write cv2. Uh, unchanged image unchanged. I am read unchanged. So you have to write that otherwise it will not work properly uh, because we are going to remove the transparency. So then what we need to do is uh, at the very end, we can overlay the image or yeah, we can overlay it over here as well. It doesn't matter. So here we are going to write that um, uh, CV zone dot overlay PNG. So image, uh, the first one is the background or the, the first one is the background. So this will be image. And the second one is our image graphics. It will overlay. And where is the position? The position is zero, zero. It's right at the corner. And we will put it back to our image uh, in the main file. So let's run that and see if it's in the correct position. If it is, then we will overlay the count on it. There you go. So now the image is there, looks good. And now we will remove this uh, rectangular count. And instead of this count, we are going to simply write cv2 dot put text and we are going to write uh, the image, the text will be basically string of the length of the total count. And then we will have, what do we have next? The origin, uh, the origin, let me check. It should be 255 and 100. Then we have CV2 dot font Hershey plane and then the the font scale let's put it as five uh, the color let's put it as black or let's put it as red 50 let's less red 50 50 255 and the thickness let's put it as eight so let's run that and see if it works and there you go so now you can see the count. It looks really good. Tuck, 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 tuck. <laughs> so normally you won't be able to count it this fast. So finally, the the robots or the AI is helping us solve problems. So this was our project for car counter, and it was a really, really simple. And as you can see, it's very fun to do and it is very informative. So I will see you in the next one. So now that we have completed our car counter project, we are going to do a similar project to that, which will be people counter. So the difference between car counter and people counter will be that we will have multiple directions that we are counting in. So if we go to our video people, uh, people.mp4, and we have a look at the mp4 you can see that we have an escalator that has two directions uh, one is going up and the other one is going down so there are people uh, going down there are people going up so we are going to count how many people went up and how many people went down so that will be the task for this project so what we will do is first of all we will copy which is the best thing ever <laughs> We'll copy and paste our complete project. Now, what this will allow us to do is to use our previous code and we can adjust it to um, our new video and our new purpose. So we can write here, 
people counter and this is project number two so we will hit okay so project number two people counter first of all we will open it up and we will rename it uh where is the rename here is the rename so we will write here people counter there you go so we'll write people counter here uh, we have sort mask and graphics now the mask and graphics are going to change but for now just to make sure everything works fine uh, first of all we are going to change the video we will write here people and then we are going to run it to see what happens so as you can see we are still using the large version so there you go so we have the graphics over here which is for the car and we have a line here which is basically counting but as you can see it is not counting anything because it's not detecting anything because if you remember we asked it to only detect uh, cars bikes trucks and um, motorbikes so th that that are uh, those are the four classes that we want to detect so that is not being detected here that's the first thing the second thing is that we have the mask which is being overlaid um, uh, in the wrong place we need to remove that too and uh, then we also have the counter or the graphics which which is wrong as well so first of all let's bring in the graphics again you will find the graphics um, in the zip file when you download it from our website so I've created this earlier and this is how it looks so this is the graphics so what we can do is we can simply replace these graphics right away so that we have one less thing to worry about so here in the graphics we have graphics or PNG and we will not put it at zero zero what we'll do instead is let me check the exact values it's 730 730 and 260 so this is the exact position where it should be so if we run this now we will have the graphics being shifted there you go so we have the graphics over here so that is the first thing done towards our people counter project then the second thing uh, that we can do is we can open up the detections for people so here we have car and here we have the confidence so the confidence will keep the same the rest we will delete and we will write here person if the current class is person and the confidence is greater than 0 0.3 so now it should give us the detections but we will have the issue of the mask because as you can see the mask is around here so it's only detecting in this region so the mask is completely wrong so what we need to do we need to go ahead and create our new mask so let's go ahead and do that so we are back here in canva and as you can see it's the same file we had this mask earlier and now we are going to create a new mask and this is the same video that we saw earlier and first of all we are going to fill it up in the space and now we are going to start creating our mask we can go back and simply copy one of the rectangles uh, so that it will be easier for us to work with so here we will rotate it like that maybe a little bit lower there you go i think that's good we will copy that and we will paste it here okay it's not straight it's not aligned with the with the escalator so maybe around like that so let, let's play the video so that we can see till what points do we get the people coming in out there you go so i think yeah maybe a little bit lower and maybe a little bit tilted why does it start in the wrong position there you go so yeah i think that should be fine and we can remove this because this is correctly aligned and we can paste it here oh no the angles are different <laughs> okay so we need to rotate it again maybe like that and we will put it here there you go so this should be our new mask and we can push this back here and we will delete this video so that becomes white we need to fill this gap there you go so we can download this mask uh, now we need to select which page we're talking about page number two and we don't want any transparency or any compression 
and now it's downloaded so we will drag it in our people counter and we will write here mask the reason i'm showing this is because if you have a different video or if you are working on a different project you can actually do it yourself uh, otherwise for me to just copy and paste is very easy because i've already done this but uh, i'm showing you this so that you can do it yourself for your own project as well so this is the mask and now let's open up the region as well so that we are 100 percent sure that it is um, working as we expect it to so there you go so this is the mask and as you can see it is detecting very well so one two three four five six seven and now we need to fix the counter so how many people are going up and how many people are going down so in this case we will have two lines so we don't have just one line we will have two limits first of all let's comment this out and we will go up and in the count or in the limits uh, we will have two of each so we will have limit limits up and limits down limits down and then we have total count up and total count down so uh, we need to put the lines here so i have the lines for up it is 103 161 and 296 296 and 161 and then for the limit down is 527 489 and 735 and 489 735 and 489 yeah so yeah that's good and here we have uh, limits because now we'll have some errors because limits is not actually there so what we can do is we can comment all these errors we can comment this control and slash is how you comment and then we will comment this as well and anything else no okay so now that this is commented and we know there will be no errors what we can do is we can change this line for example to limits and we can write here up and up why am i writing it wrong up and up. okay and then we will write again for the other line we will write down limit down and i'm going to copy it so that i don't have to manually write it again and again okay so let's run that and hopefully we will have two lines uh, one for going up and one for going down there you go so this line is for going up and this line here is for going down so we need to check for both of these individually uh, how many people are crossing that line and how many people are crossing that line okay so then we will come to the limits so here let's do for one so instead of limits we will write limits up See how lazy I am. I'm going up just to copy it. <laughs> so limits up, I'm going to paste everywhere. Uh, you can actually do a search and replace. But again, you see how lazy I am. Okay, total count, we'll put up. Why, why I? I don't know why. Okay, total count up dot pen ID and blah, blah. And here in the, in the, put text we are going to write up okay so let's run that and let's see uh, what kind of results do we get are we getting anything good because it is supposed to be, uh, get red uh, green yeah so there you go it went green one count two count and three count there you go and four count excellent so this is working fine all we need to do now is take that and put it down uh, in the correct region and make it green instead of red so let me check the values exact values for the count is 929 and 345 345 and Hershey plane 5 and 7 and this should be 139 195 
and 74. So we are giving it a bit of a green color. Uh, green is for up, red is for down. So there you go. So here you have zero. So the first one goes, so you get one. And then the second one is two. And the third one is three. So now we need to do for the people going down. Okay, so for the people going down, it's very simple. All you have to do is you have to, uh, yeah, here the if condition, copy that and paste it. And instead of up, now we are going to write down, limits down. So if we go down and here we'll write down, 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 down. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we have count up, so that will become down. Count up will become down. We will copy the text, and here the values are 1191 and 345, and the color will be 50, 50, and 230. So this should be total down. So let's run that and see if it works. There you go. So we have the red part here, the green part here. So this is going up one, two, three, and now it should detect these two as well. One and two, there you go. So we have a total number of people, four people going up, and we have a total number of two people going down. So of, uh, again, if it was crowded, uh, it will detect all the uh, other people as well and we'll do the calculations so as you can see it's very easy to actually change the code a little bit and uh, cater it to your own project and it is very fun to play around with these values and uh, because this is something that you can implement in real time and it is uh, something you can implement it as a real world application that's why it's really informative and fun to do as well and in the next part, we are going to learn how to create your own custom model. So you can create your own data set and use that data set to train your model. And using that model, you can create your project. So that is what we are going to do next. So let's go ahead. So now we have already studied and already learned how actually we can use pre-trained model to create our projects. But now we are going to create custom trained models uh, with our own data set and we are going to use it in our projects. So how can we do that? So we can do that by using either NVIDIA's graphic card or we can use it by running Google Collab online. So we will be using Google Collab since everyone has access to it and it's free to use. And if you have your own graphics card uh, installed, you can do pretty much the same thing offline as well, uh, pretty much the same code to run it on your own PC. So uh, here we have a Google Collab opened up and uh, it's called YOLO version eight. And right now it's empty. And what we have to make sure is that the runtime is, if you go to change, we have to make sure that the runtime is GPU. We are going to save that. Now, uh, before we actually go and write some code on how to train your custom model, we need to know what kind of data set that we need. So the project that we are going to do today is called the PPE detection or the personal protective equipment, basically the hard hat and the construction jacket and the mask. So we need to find whether a person is wearing that or not. So we have this uh, data set available on RoboFlow and you can see we have the version YOLO 8 as well. You can simply download it from here. So if you click on that and you can download uh, zip to computer and you can press continue. Now by doing this, what will happen is that you will get the data set as well as the YAML file that will allow you to uh, run with YOLO version 8. Now. If you don't have uh, a data set available online and if you wanted to create your own data set, then you actually need to know what is the uh, format in which the data set should be. So in order to understand that, we are going to open up this construction data set. So here is that data set. If you download it in a zip format and if you extract it, you will have test, train and valid. 
these are the three folders and then you will have a data file so in the test file you will have images and labels in the train file you will have images and labels and valid also images and labels so if you open up test file if you open up images you will see all of these different images that you have and each image will have a corresponding um, text file and in that text file you will see all the different classifications so for example you will find the class number eight at this at these coordinates so these are basically normalized values it means they are from zero to one in between those values uh, if you multiply it with the actual image size you will get the pixel values so these are the four values x1 y1 and the width and the height so you can find all these values for all these different classes for all these different images so if you go to for example train you will find images and within these images you will uh, find these labels and within the labels you will find all these corresponding uh, coordinates so this is the file format and then the important thing to have is the data so the data of yaml file basically it gathers all this information uh, into one place and if you open that up you will see that you have train validation and test folders so you have to mention where these folders are and then you have the number of classes that is equal to 10 in this case and you have the names of all these classes so uh, you have hard hat mask no hard hat no mask no safety vest person and uh, safety cone safety vest machinery and so on so and uh, the rest of this is uh, not very important uh, this is just for the copyrights uh, and all that so what you can do is and there is one more thing we need to add when we bring it to Google Colab. So what we will do is we will copy all of this data to Google Drive. So if you go to my drive right now, I have a datasets folder and within that dataset we have construction safety. So this is the exact same folder. You can see here. You can see here construction safety. So you have readme, readme and then you have the data.yaml. And then you have the test, train, and valid. These are the three folders. If you open that up, each folder will have labels and uh, images inside of it. There you go. So this is the basic idea. If we go back to our data sets, construction safety, and this is the main thing. So here, data.yaml, we have to make some changes here. So here in the file, you'll go to the text editor. If you remember, here our file contains train validate and test these are the folders that we have but we need to define the path where these are present so we have to write here path and then we have to define the path in our drive in the google drive so that is what we have done here so you will open that up and you will write here path and inside that you will write drive my drive and then whatever your folder is so for me inside my drive i have the folder data sets inside that i have the construction safety and inside that we have train valid and test so you have to write this path the rest of it remains the same so this is the basic idea of how you can uh, upload your files to uh, google drive and how you can edit it to run it uh, using google collab so that's the only thing you have to do you have to write here uh, path and you have to give in the path file I will show you it uh, I will show you this again once we go into our Google Drive okay that's done but what if you have your own images and you want to create this uh, if you want to label it what can you do then now to do that we have a very famous label IMG project uh, that is available on github and you can see it is by heart uh, ex labs so thanks to all the uh, contributors and the creators so what you have to do is you have to go to the releases you can click on binary and here you can download the zip file once you download the zip file you can extract it and once you extract that you will get something like this label image.exe now for example if you were to uh, find the poker chips if you were detecting poker chips here in the data you will go to predefined classes uh, 
And here I have given 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100. These are our five classes. In case of construction safety, we have hard hat, no hard hat, uh, um, a jacket, no jacket, and stuff like that. So you will do that, and then you will go back and click on label image.exe. Once you open that up, you can open directory. You can select, for example, these are the images I want to label or whatever. So for example, these are the images. So then you can press R, uh, sorry, you can press W to actually select. And you can define, for example, this is class number five and hit OK. So this will create this label. Then you'll press W again. And this is, for example, for 100. You'll click on 100 and press OK. Now, the easy way to do this is do all the fives first, then all the tens, then all the hundreds, all the twenties, things like that. And once you want to export, you will make sure that this here, it's YOLO format, and you will click on save. And here it will save the file. If you hit save, it will save the file uh, in that location. So if we open the directory, so here we have this directory. So let's say we save this one. So if we open that up, you can see it's the same format. So zero is for, I think five, uh, that's for five. Uh, so the location of this is at this point. So these are the coordinates for that. And then class number one is present here. Uh, class number two uh, you have here and so on. So this is how you can label these images. So the data.yml file you can create yourself. As I've mentioned, it's very easy to do. Uh, all you have to do is you have to write the path, the train, the validation, and the test folders. And then you have to write number of classes and the names of the classes. That's it. And you will save the file. It's a simple uh, text file, basically, uh, by the format .yml. So once you have done that, now we can simply go ahead uh, and upload everything uh, for example, in this case, uh, we can download it from here, the um, construction safety image data set. And once we have that, we can upload it to our Google Drive. Once Google Drive, uh, these are the basically the files, we'll select all and drag, but I will not do that now. Then once you have that, because it will take some time, then we have YOLO version 8. This is our Google Collab file. So what we have to do is, uh, first of all, you will go to folder and here in the folder, you will see that we have an option here to connect your drive, mount drive. So make sure you click on that and it will mount your drive. It will ask you to give access. Once you give the access, this will have a cross. It means it has been mounted. So if you go back and you click on content, not the bin, the content. Uh, I think it's still loading. Let's wait for it. Content, there you go. So now you have the drive. So if I click on the drive and then my drive, and then I can go to data sets. And inside the data sets, we have construction safety. And inside construction safety, we have test train valid and data.yml. If you double click that, this is what we have to make sure. So this path should be correct. So if I right click here, let's say construction safety, if I right click and I can say copy path and then I can paste it here. So this is the path that we need to have. Content drive. So after content, uh, we need the drive. So from drive, we are going to write my drive data sets construction safety. So this is what we need. So we need to make sure it is at the path over here. So once that is done, we can close this and we can close all of that. And now we can start writing some code. Again, just make sure the runtime is GPU and we will save this. And over here, we are going to, first of all, write a few lines of code, that's it. We will need five lines of code and we will have our YOLO running and we will have our YOLO training. So first of all, we need to check whether we are uh, using a graphics card or not. So we will write here uh, NVIDIA SMI, uh, dash SMI. And then we are simply going to run it. 
So once we run this, we will have some information. So here you can see uh, Tesla T4. We are actually using 153.60 uh, MBs. So that's good. So we are actually using a graphics card. So that's done. Now what I'd like to do, I like to uh, clear all the outputs whenever we do that. So then we can write another line of code. Now in this, we are going to install Ultralytics. So we will write here pip install Ultralytics. Ultra we will hit enter, oh sorry, we'll hit play. So now it's done installing. So that's done. Again, I will go back to edit and clear outputs because I don't like them. <laughs> then we are going to go and we are going to import YOLO. So like we did earlier, from Ultralytics import YOLO. Uh, YOLO is capital. And we are going to press enter. And there you go, it has been executed. So now we are going to write the actual command that will run YOLO and detect it on an image. So first of all, we are going to write YOLO and then we will define the task to detect from an image. We need to detect objects. It also has the option of classification and it also has the op uh, option of segmentation. But for now, we will just do detection. You can write segmentation as well if you want to do segment. Then we have mode predict. Uh, th there is training as well. There's validation as well, but right now we are using the mode as predict. Then the model. So which model we are using? We are using YOLO 8 version, uh, YOLO version 8, which is large. So we are using the large model and the confidence level minimum should be 0 0.25. And what is the source? The source is basically the image. So you, it can be here in your drive or you can give an online source. So for now, uh, we are just giving it an online source. This is basically ultralytics.com slash images slash bus.jpg. If you had your own image, you can import it here and test it out. Or if you have an image online, you can test it from there as well. So once that is done, this is the moment of truth. We will press enter, uh, control enter, and then it will execute this command. So first of all, as always, it is going to download the weights because it already does not have that. That is done. Now it is running uh, and it is using CUDA 0, Tesla T4. This is the GPU that it's using. So that's good. We know that it's working. It's downloading the image and the image has been downloaded and it has executed everything. So as you can see, this is now done and uh, you can see it downloaded the file and then it gave us the result that there were five people detected, one bicycle and one bus. So if we open this up, uh, it will not actually show you the bounding boxes and all that, but we will need to write some code for that. But for now, you can see there's one person here, second here, third here, fourth here, and maybe a fifth inside well, over here. So five people, uh, one bicycle, one bus. So this is the bus. Uh, I'm not sure where the bicycle is though. Um, and yeah. So that's the idea. So it means it is working. So what we need, we don't need to test any images here. We can run it on our actual offline code and we can write the same code here and it will work fine as well. But we just wanted to check whether it's working or not, whether the installations are working or not. So once we have confirmed that the installations are done, what we need is a simple one line code to actually uh, do our custom Custom training. Oh, custom data training. So that's it. And then what we will do, we will add our code and I'm going to paste it here. So now we have a similar command like before. We have YOLO, then we have task. Again, we have detection. But this time around, the mode is training not prediction it is training and it is training based on again 
the large um, what do you call the model you can use the nano small or medium as well and where exactly is the data so this is uh, what you have to define this is what you have to change so data basically equals uh, double dot slash content drive so this is the exact path that you will copy and paste here so double dash back uh, double dot back content drive my drive data sets construction safety slash data dot yaml so you have to give that file that file is the linking file for all the data set so you need to give the location of that file then you can define the number of epochs and the image size so that's pretty much it and now all you have to do is press run and see the magic happen so it will take a while to actually train so we will let it train and then we will come back to it so first of all it is setting up all the weights here you can see 589 of 595 items from pre-trained weights so we are using the pre-trained weights to actually train our own model uh, you can say it is transfer learning as well so the optimizer is, uh, has a learning rate of 0 0.01 and let's see when does it start so there you go so right now it has started so this is epoch number one uh, did it start not yet let's wait for it to start so now you can see the epoch has started the counter has started and here you can see the uh, time that has taken already and the estimated time that is left so this is basically the idea so each one of these will take for example uh, two minutes or three minutes so you can calculate from there it will take for example 150 minutes so anyways let's wait for it to finish and i will see you once it's done So now you can see that the process has completed the training is completed and if you go to uh, runs this is basically in our content if you go to runs and in detect you go to train you will see all these files generated so the main thing that we need to uh, look at is the best.pt these are the weights and this is the last weight.pt so uh, and the rest of these are basically uh, the parameters the response of our model so for example you can see over here results.png uh, you also have the uh, so here you can see the mean average position values and you also have the recall and the precision values and you have the training loss um, for the class and for also for the box and then you also have the confusion matrix so all of these things you can download you can click here and download uh, it will be easier to see uh, otherwise you can open it up on uh, google collab as well so here you can see the confusion matrix of how well it responded uh, to the training so then what you will do is you will download the best file and once that is downloaded you are going to bring it to our project so here we are going to name our projects so we will copy yolo with webcam because that's pretty much what we are doing we are running it with webcam and what we will do is we will remove all of this and we will write project 3 and here we will write ppe detection so this is our project 3 and it says yolo webcam so we will double click that and right click and rename and we will write ppe uh, detection there you go so now what we can do is we can use the ppe videos so if we go here we can open in our explorer and you can see we have these three videos this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one so we are going to test on all three and we'll also test on the webcam i do have a hard hat and uh, we'll, we'll, i'm pretty sure we can find a mask and i also have the construction jacket so maybe we'll try that as well so uh, let's write here ppe-1 uh, i believe that's the name 
and uh, yeah that's good and then we have to change the uh, model so here we are just simply going to drag and drop so here this is the model so we are going to drop it here and we are going to call it PPE so here we will change it to PPE and we will remove all of this so let's go ahead and run it so let's uh, actually one more thing I forgot we do have to change the class names so if we open up our files uh, that we got the data.yml file we have the names of all the classes so we can simply copy it from there so this is in the data.yml file and we can replace it with our class names there you go so these are the class names and now if we run it it should work fine there you go so it's detecting the person it's detecting the hard hat uh, no mask and you can see it also detects safety or no safety vest so it's not the most accurate but it is giving us some uh, good readings so what you can do is you can train it uh, with more data set and for longer epochs for more epochs to get better results so here you can see safety vest no mask hard hat and person person hard hat no mask and there you go uh, let's try for number three There you go. We have safety vest, hard hat, person, no safety vest. Here we have no mask, safety vest, hard hat. Okay, so what we can do is, uh, this is a little bit difficult to see what exactly has been detected or and what's not been detected. So what we can do is, we can check which classes are we detecting and based on that we can assign a color. So here we can put a normal rectangle or do we need to put yeah, let's put a normal rectangle instead of the corner rect. So we will write here cb2 dot uh, rectangle and image and we will give in the uh, x1, y1 and the x2 and the y2 and then we are going to give in the color. So this will be uh, my color let's say my color so by default my color my color equals red so zero zero two five five and then we are going to write down the thickness the thickness let's say it's three and that's pretty much it so and then for this part here put text rect uh, we are also going to assign the color color for the rectangle or color for the background and color for the text so the color for the background let's make it my color and for the text we have to make it white uh, color for the text we are going to make it white so two five five to uh, two five five and two five five so let's run this and see what happens now oh, we need to remove the corner rectangle so what we are trying to do is that it should detect uh, it should show us the red color and in in the case where there's no mask or no hard hat and in case it is present it should give us green so okay so yeah now it's my color is showing but it didn't show for the put text rect uh, let's put it for the color rect as my color as well yeah now it's good so it's showing red for all of these so now we need to make sure if uh, by default it will be red if we are detecting one of those classes that have the green then it should detect green for example we have the uh, hard hat we have the mask and we have the 
uh, safety vest. So these are the three classes. So what we will do is we are going to check. Now, first of all, we will write here current class equals uh, class names at CLS. And if current class equals hard hat, is it capital? Yes, hard hat, then my color equals zero, two, five, five, uh, and zero. Let's try that out. So now all of them are green. So what's the issue? If current class equals hard hat, my color is zero two five five. Um, current class is coming from here. Put text, um, and we need to give it after. So the rectangle, because this has my color, needs to be here. So we will put it here and current class equals hard hat. Hard hat. Why did it show all of them green? That's weird. Let's print the current class. So when we are printing the current class, it shows person, safety vest, safety vest, safety vest. Oh, we need to write else. Uh, else, because it's not changing after that. My color equals my color equals uh zero uh two five uh zero zero and two five five now hopefully it will be better yeah so there you go we have green for hard hat and the rest are red okay so if my current class is hard hat or my current class is safety vest uh, safety vest and mask or my uh, current class equals mask then it is this otherwise the rest of them are red um, and what else can we do? We can make it smaller because scale is not that good. Um, we are using the put text rect. We can make the scale 0 0.5, let's say, and the thickness is one, that's fine. Um, and the offset, no, offset, let's make it five instead of 10. So it will be a little bit smaller so that it's easier to know what is going on. Uh, there you go. It's there's a lot of overlap. That's why it's a little bit confusing But you can see that when it's uh, the hard hat it is detecting it's showing us green when it's not it's showing us red uh, Let's try it Actually the, the scale is very small So let's try one and let's try another video. The first one was the most clear Let's try that one out there you go. So we have the hard hat, we have the person, no mask and safety vest. Uh, or what we can do is we can assign a third color as well, because if it's a person, then we don't need to worry about that. So all the red colors and all the green colors, and then we give an else. So if it's current mask and all of that, then we can write else if, else if, and then we can write else else my color is purple or let's say blue 
two five five zero and zero okay so uh, it's no hard hat no hard hat and no safety vest and no mask yep these are the ones for red uh, then safety cone safety vests we don't really care about that the the rest are blue so let's run that so the person now should be blue and uh, we should have green for okay it's opposite uh, hard hats safety vests and we also need to give in maybe a threshold so that we don't get a lot of wrong detections if the confidence level is greater than 0 0.5 let's say then only we'll do all of that so yeah the, we were talking about the color so no hard hat uh, all of this is is supposed to be red these are supposed to be green so and the rest are blue let's run that again there you go so we have the safety vest safety uh, hard hat and the person and then we have uh, the no mask so when it's not very clear it's not giving good results but overall it seems to work fine so now we can also try it with the webcam so i will put it okay let's keep it for video and for webcam we can open this up and let's try it out so as you can see uh, i'm not wearing a hard hat no mask and no safety vest but it's detecting the person so if i wear a mask you can see it's detecting the mask and if i wear the hard hat you can see it detects the hard hat there you go if i remove the mask it says no mask there you go and we have the hard hat and no safety vest So now we are headed to project number four and in this project we are going to create a poker hand detector in which we will uh, first of all detect all the different cards and once we have the cards we are going to determine what poker hand do we have. So this is a very interesting project because it has multiple layers and the first one is to actually detect the cards which we will do by YOLO and the second one is actually classifying uh, what um, hand do we have. So there will be a little bit of code involved there. So where are we getting the data from? The data is available on RoboFlow Universe and we are downloading the playing cards image data set and we will download the YOLO version 8 so you can simply click on that, download zip to computer, and you can press continue. Once it is downloaded, you upload it to the Google Drive. So let me show you uh, where that is. So this is the playing card data set. So we have validation, training, and test data sets. So we have labels and we have images for each of these labels. So like we have seen before in our BPE project, it is the same format. And the, the thing that is different is again, the data.yml file. So let's open that up in a text editor and let's see what changes have we made there. So this is our data.yml file. And here you can see we have number of classes as 52 and all of these classes are based on the rank and the suit so here it's 10 of clubs 10 of diamond for example so all of these as you can see uh, we have here and then we have uh, the training validation and test folders but we also have defined the path so the path is drive my drive data, data sets and playing cards fixed so they had an issue earlier where they had a duplicate so uh, I believe it's fixed now. Uh, earlier they had 53 classes because there was a duplicate, but now it's fixed. So I had to upload it again and use this as playing cards fixed. So uh, this is what we have. And then what we do next, what I did next is actually to save some time. I ran the exact same 
Google Collab. So you check the NVIDIA uh, driver or the NVIDIA graphics card. And we have the similar one that we had earlier, which is Tesla T4. It is 16 GB of um, memory. And then we install Ultralytics. And after that, we import YOLO from Ultralytics. And this you don't have to perform just to make sure it's running. You can do that and then you start the training process so in the training process all you have to do is you have to change the data uh, path so it will be content drive my drive data sets playing cards fixed slash data dot y a m l so this is what we have to do and uh, we will have 50 epochs so right now it's taking a long time so meanwhile it's training we are going to go ahead and understand the basic concepts of poker and how we can create a classifier for poker so th that part does not involve object detection but it is quite crucial to the project so we'll first go through that meanwhile this will uh, finish what do you call training and then we can take the data and start uh, the detection as well so this is up and running. And by the way, this is the data.yml file. You can see it's here as well. So that's good. So let's go back and try to understand what exactly uh, is a poker game and how we can uh, create a classifier for it. So to do that, I've created a simple uh, poker hands, uh, what do you call classifier, or you can see this is the data sheet or the cheat sheet. So we have a total of 10 different classes. So high card, pair, two pair, three of a kind, and so on. So we will start by understanding that first of all, you have to compare five cards. So everyone has two cards and the rest are laid out uh, in, in public domain. So everyone has access to those cards that are in public domain, but the two cards that you have are only for you to view. So what you have to do is you have to check your two cards and you have to check the rest of the cards that are in public domain to find the best possible scenario. So the biggest uh, hand. So whenever we have these five cards, we call it a hand. So we have a total of 10 types of hands and to understand these we need to understand what is rank and what is suit so in poker uh, or in playing cards we actually have for example this is an a of hearts this is a queen of clubs so a is basically the rank and hearts is basically the suit so five is a rank and clubs is a suit so similarly, we have seven as the rank and diamond as the suit. So what we need to do is we need to understand that first of all, we will differentiate these two. Some hands are based on just the ranks and some hands are based on just the uh, suits and some of them are a combination. So let's start with the easiest one, which is a pair. We will get to the high card later on, but let's start with the pair. The pair, you have same rank of two cards. So the rest of them, they don't match, but two of them, they match. So it can be 2-2, two, two, it can be 5-5, five, five, it can be 7-7, seven, seven, it can be AA. A. So whatever the card is, you should have a pair of the rank, not the suit of the rank. So for example, you can see this is a pair of suit, but that does not count. So you don't have a pair of suit, you only have a pair of rank. Okay, then we have two pair. Two pair is similar to one pair, instead that you have two of them instead of one. So you have a king king and a five five. So that's two pair. Then you have three of a kind. In three of a kind, you have three of the same ranks. So it can be seven, 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 eight, 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 king, 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 queen, 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 or 10, 10, 10 in this case. The other two, they don't matter. Then you have a straight. In straight, you have consecutive numbers so for example seven eight nine ten jack now here again the rank matters not the suit we, we are not looking at the suits at all uh, till this point so for example you have two three four five six that is also a straight then you have uh seven eight nine ten jack then you can also have nine ten jack queen king that is also a straight. So you should have consecutive ranks. So uh, if you do seven plus one, that should be the next one, eight. 
plus one, nine. So that's the idea. By the way, the rank for Jack is 11. So after 10, you have uh, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. So Jack is 11, rank number 11, Queen is 12, King is 13, A is 14. So that's the biggest rank. Okay, uh, after straight, now comes the suits. So if you have all the same suits, then you have a flush. So it can be all diamonds, it can be all hearts, it can be all uh, clubs, all spades, whatever it is. Um, if all of them are, or five of them uh, are of the same suit, then it is a flush. Then you have a full house. In full house, you have three of a kind, which is you have three cards that are of the same rank. And then you have a pair. So you have two, 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 and then 10, 10. It can be five, 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 and seven, seven. So three of a kind plus a single pair, that is your full house. Then you have four of a kind, which is very simple. You have four of the same ranks. So five, 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 seven, 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 nine, 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 king, 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 and so on. So the ranks are pretty much the same. Again, we don't care about the suits. Uh, actually, the suits, you will have all the suits. So uh, it, it's, it's obvious. And the last card, we don't care about the last card. Okay. Uh, then we have a straight flush. Uh, in the straight flush, we have a straight and a flush. So we have the ranks and we have the suits as well. So the suits, as you can see, all of them are uh, clubs. And the uh, straight is 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen. Again, it can be two, three, four, five, six, or any other uh, uh, any other formation. But it also has to have the suits that, as the same. And the last one, which is the highest one, it is that you have you have a straight, but starting from ace. So ace, king, queen, jack, ten. So that is the highest straight plus you have a flush. So that is a royal flush. So uh, you have, for example, hearts, 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 and then you have a king, queen, jack. If it starts from queen, or if it starts from king, king, queen, jack, 10, nine, no, it's not a royal flush. In that case, it is simply uh, a straight or a flush. So, uh, uh, sorry, straight flush. In that case, it's a straight flush. So that is the basic idea. And the last one, if you don't have any combination, then you have the highest card. So the biggest card. So for example, if somebody um, had a pair and you had the highest card, the pair will win. So with the high card, if both of you don't have anything, like there are two players playing against each other, your five cards versus their five cards, if both of them have no classes at all, none of them, then you check which one has the highest card. So if you have the king and the other one has queen, then you win. So that's the idea. So what we will do is we will classify one hand. So we'll not do two hands. We'll do just one hand uh, of uh, our own hand. So uh, we will send in five values uh, as strings and it will output us the name of the hand. So that will be interesting too. Uh, accomplish. So we will keep this image open and I will put it on the side and we will come back to it every now and then. So let's start by creating the folder and we are going to call it project for poker hand detector. So poker hand detector, we're going to start off with that. Okay, so what we'll do is we will create a function and this function, we will input it five strings or you can say a list with five strings and it will output us the result. So we will create it as a module so that it is a separate code in a separate file and we can simply link it to our project. So here we will create a new Python file and we will call it poker hand detector. Uh, function let's call it so here we are going to write uh, def find poker hand so that's how you write uh, what do you call 
a function and we have to return something and right now we will return zero okay so that's good and then what we have to do is uh, we, we will be testing it as well. So we need to make sure that we run this individually and then we will integrate it to our project. So we will write if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main. So this means that it is checking if this is the main file that is running, then uh, it will run this code. If some other file is calling this function, it will not run this code. So yeah we have to put double equal there you go so now what we can do is we can uh, send in a few uh, what do you call hands so let's start off so here is our image so let's start off by creating all these hands and one by one we are going to send it to see what it gives so first of all uh, let's start we are going to start at the top we'll start with royal flush so a of hearts k of hearts queen and so on so here we will write uh, find poker hand and we will send in a list and inside the list we will give a of hearts then k of hearts then we will give uh, queen of hearts then we will give jack of hearts jack of hearts and then we are going to give 10 of hearts so this will be our royal flush and in front of it we are going to write royal flush and then we will copy this and we are going to paste and then the second one we will do is straight flush so again queen jack 10 9 8 but all of them are clubs so queen queen of club then jack of club then 10 of club 9 of club and 8 of club so this is not a royal flush it is a straight s-t-r-a-i-g-h-t straight flush so these are the two that we are starting off with. So let's run that and see what do we get. So no, actually no, we'll get nothing. So what we have to do is we have to return. Uh, let's return. We will put here hand and we will return the hand. Okay. Or no, we'll not return the hand. We want to print it. So we will print the hand okay so let's run that and see what do we get uh no we are running the previous one right click and run and there you go so now we are getting this uh these two as the output so that's good we have started and the first thing we will do is we will find the ranks and we'll find the suits individually and put them in a list because what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand some of them we will um, classify based on ranks some of them classifying based on suits so if we have them in a list we can play around with them very easily so that will be our first step we need to make sure that we have the ranks and the suits uh, all in uh, two different lists so here we will write ranks equals a list and then suits equals a list so these are the two lists that we have and we are going to loop through the hand and uh, for card in hand we are going to loop through the card and first of all uh, what we can do is if, if I wanted the rank for example I want the rank which is the first element here so all I have to do is I have to say card at zero right so let me print that out so if i write that that will be my rank so i'm getting a i'm getting k queen jack one uh, and all that so basically i'm getting what i need but if you look at the last one i'm getting one that's wrong that's not the actual rank so uh, what i can do is 
I can I can put an if statement that if the digits are three, then it means it is a 10. Okay, so then I will take two values instead of one. So I need to get zero and I need to get till one. Uh, sorry, till two, because that's not in inclusive. So then I will get 10, but for the rest of them, I should not get two. I should get only one. So that's the idea. So I have to check here if the length of card equals two, or should we write, yeah, equals two, then it will be rank equals uh, card at zero, else rank equals card at uh, zero, sorry, zero to two. So now if we print, print the rank, then it will show us. So for A, King, Queen, Jack, it's fine. It's getting one. And for 10, it is getting two. So that's the idea. So for eight, nine, it's fine. For 10, it is getting the two. That is exactly what we needed. So this way, we are basically uh, getting the rank and we also need the suits. So if, if, if the card has the length of two, then the suit is the next value, right? So the suits equals card at one. But if that's not the case, then the suit is basically card at two. So zero, one, two. So that's the idea. And now we will have the rank and the suit. So they will be separately detected. There you go. So A of hearts, king of hearts, queen of hearts, 10 of hearts, and so on. So now we have it separately. So all we have to do now is we have to append it to our uh, list. So here we will say ranks dot append rank and suits dot append suit. And we have to do it for each card. So this should be inside. And we can remove that. So once that is done, just to make sure we are headed in the right direction, we will print the ranks. This will be a list of ranks. Um, and then we will also print suits suits there you go so we have the list of ranks and we have the list of suits we have the list of ranks we have the list of suits so that's good so now first of all uh, we are going to start off by royal flush so here we are going to check for royal flush flush and uh, we'll check the uh, rest later on now how can we check for royal flush in royal flush the first thing we need to check is whether it is a flush or not if all of them are same if all of them are same in the suits then it is a flush so how can you do that so basically what you can do is you can check if or let me just print it uh, so that it's easier to see uh, actually what is happening so what we can do is we can check for the suits dot count the first element okay uh, it can be anything because all of them have to be same in order for this to be true so you can pick any element from the list so you can write suits at zero. So basically we are asking it to count the number of times you are getting this element. So for example, it will take H and it will count how many times we have H in this list. If that is equal to five, then it means all of them are, uh, uh, it's a flush. Then all of them are the same, then it's a flush. 
So let's run it. So in the first one, it's true. And in the second one, it's also true. But let's put another hand, poker hand. We are going to put, let's say, we will put another hand. Uh, let's put four of a kind, which is next. So it is five, 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 and queen. So it is five of club, five of spade, five of hearts, five of diamond. And we have queen of hearts, queen of hearts. So this is, what is it? Four of a kind. So in that case, it will give us a false because all of them are not uh, same. So the last one, it is giving us false because it is not a, a, a flush. So this is only checking for a flush. By the way, the next one, no, the one after that is a flush. So let's put a flush as well. So we'll have another one. So let's just put full house as well. We'll put full house and flush both of them. So these are two, 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 and ten, ten. Uh, so two of, so I'm writing it exactly like it is so that there is no confusion of what we are doing. Uh, two of diamonds and two of spade. Two of spade, two of spade. What is this? Why is that like this? It should be heart, not club. Okay, two of spade and then 10 of hearts and then 10 of spade, uh, club. There you go. So this one is, what is it? Full house, uh, full house and the next one the next one will be uh, flush so in flush you have uh, I'm using again the same one two of diamonds then all of them they will be diamonds so this will be king of diamonds this is seven of diamond then we have six of diamond, six of diamond, and five of diamond. Five of diamond. So let's run that. Uh, it's giving us a lot of outputs. So let's not print the hand and let's not print the ranks and suits. Uh, and we run that and there you go. So the first one has a flush, so it's true. The second one is also a straight flush, so it's true. The third one is four of a kind, so it's false. Um, the fourth one is also false because it's a full house. And then we also have another flush, so it's true. So this means this methodology will first of all tell us whether it's a flush or not. So we can check for royal flush and we can check for straight flush. And we can also check for flush. So we can check three of these things right away. So if we go in, if we have this first condition, if that is true, it means it is a flush. Now, once we know it is a flush, we can get to the second step, checking whether it's a royal flush or not. So in, in the royal flush, we must have the ranks. So, uh, but, but the thing is that it might be A of hearts, king of hearts, but it might be um, sorted wrong. So we need to make sure, first of all, that they are sorted properly. So the biggest one, the highest rank should be the first. But A, king, queen does not have a rank yet. Because if we print it out, if we print out the ranks, uh, let's just write pass here. If we print out the ranks, it will not give us for A, king and queen it, it's simply writing a king queen jack which is which is wrong in our case because uh, we need to work with values uh, when we sort them out we want uh, 14 to be a instead of just writing a otherwise it will not be organized because if i put if i remove a here and i put a here then it will give us 
K first and A second, uh, which is still a royal flush, but it's not in sequence, so we are not able to get the rank properly. So what we'll do here, we'll simply write if rank equals um, A, then rank rank equals 14. Uh, that's how simple it is. So else if rank equals king, we'll copy that, paste, and paste. Okay, so rank is A, rank will be 14, rank is K, it will be 13, rank is Q, it will be 12, rank is Jack, it will be 11. There you go. So now if we run it, we will have numbers. So 13, 14, 12, 11, 10. Now what we need to make sure is that they are sorted properly. If, if they're sorted properly, then it will be easier for us to uh, check for royal flush. So what we can do is we can simply write sorted. So sorted ranks. Uh, actually, we will do it after the sorted ranks equals sorted and we will give in our ranks. That's it. So if we print ranks again, you will see that now it will be sorted. Okay, so ranks, when we are sending them in, uh, they are not integers, they are, um, they are strings. So we need to convert it into integers. There you go. So now you will see, uh, actually it didn't do anything. Why is that? Oh, because we printed ranks, not sorted ranks. Okay, let's run that again. And you will see for the first one, you will see this one is 13, 14, 12, but now you can see it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it has sorted it. So now what we can do is, um, actually, let, let's forget about the sorted rank because, or we can use the sorted ranks, but what we can do is, uh, instead of saying that the first one is 10 and the second one is 11, we can just say if it's in this, uh, that that should work as well. So we can write if uh, 14 in sorted ranks, and so that's how you can check. If 14 is present in the sorted ranks, and uh, and then we will write another and then another and then we will write another and and then another and so if 14 is there then 13 is there then 12 is there then 11 is there and then 10 is there uh, I wrote one extra if that is the case, then it means it is a royal flush. So we will print royal royal flush. So let's run that. And there you go. So here you can see it says royal flush because this is true for this. The rest of them, it's not true. So what we will do is in order to get the output, we are going to say, uh, the, we are going to create a list called possible, possible ranks. And this list will contain all the possible ranks. So if, for example, we are getting a royal flush, we are going to put the value of 10 inside it. We are going to append. Because sometimes what you can have, um, we can also detect a single pair when it's two pair, right? So we need to find the highest one. So we will put all the possible scenarios inside this list and we will pick the highest one. So if it was, for example, if it detected that it is a three of a kind and it also detected it is a full house, then for full house, it will be seven. And for three of a kind, it will be four. So we will pick seven. And that will be our highest 
uh, hand. So that's what we are going to do. So in this case, our royal flush is 10. So we are going to put um, in, inside here, we are going to write uh, possible ranks dot append 10. So we are going to append that. And once we do that, uh, in the return, we are going to return uh, the possible ranks maximum value. So that's the basic idea. Um, or should we return? No, that will return only a number. Wait. What we can do is we can write the poker poker and ranks equals uh, we are going to create a dictionary and for each one of them we are going to give a number and a name so it will be royal lush then for the second one uh, for number nine uh, it will be straight flush and for number eight will be four of a kind then for number seven it will be full house then for number six it will be flush Then for number five, it will be straight. GHT. And then for number four, it will be three of a kind. Then for number three, it will be two pair. Pair for number two it will be pair for number one it will be i card so these are all our ranks and now what we can do is we can um, check the max possible and then we can write here poker ranks at this value so we will return that and uh, we can simply print that out. So here, for each one of them, we can simply write print. Print, print, print. There you go. So uh, now let's remove all the prints. And... Um, what we will do is, or should we print here? No, let's not print here. Uh, let's print it inside so we'll not have to write it again and again. So we will print the hand and we will print what it is. Like what did it detect? So here, print hand and print this. Or let's give it, uh, let's, let's call it output is this and then print the output and then put the output here return the output there you go so yeah let's run that and see what we get max argument is an empty sequence so the first one you can see it is a royal flush so it is returning that if nothing is there uh if if there are no we can simply write if uh, not possible ranks it means if possible ranks is empty then possible ranks dot append one it means it is high card right if we have not actually coded for the flush or the straight or full house for now it will just say uh, high card so as we go along and we keep adding uh, it will keep fixing so for now you can see it says royal flush for the first one 
for the second third fourth and fifth it says high card so now we are heading in the right direction uh, we are getting a good output we can see the results and here we are checking for uh, this sorted ranks let's keep it for now maybe we will need it later but actually we don't really need it for now uh, so once we check that if this is the case uh, the second one we are going to check is for straight flush so if we know how to check for straight we can just put the straight code inside this if statement and it will become straight flush because this statement is checking for flush because if we write here else else possible dot append is uh, what is flush flush is number six so we'll put here six and if we run this now you will see that this one is detected as a flush and this one is detected as a flush so this one is correct it's a flush but this one is a straight flush so we need to fix that we need to add another if statement here to check for straight how do you check for straight let's do that first so here we are going to write straight okay so what happens is in order to check for straight now we need the sorted ranks so for example we will have uh, in the sorted ranks we will have let's say 10 11 12 13 14 so this is our sorted ranks so what can we do we can take the first element or we can take this element and we can say check the element before this and add one to it so right now we are talking about 11 we will take 11 and then we will take the element before this which will be 10 and we will write here 10 and we will say that add one to that element plus one and check if they both are equal so then it will become 11 equals 11 so that is true then it will go to the next element so it will go to 12 then it will check the one before it it will be 11 so it will write 11 and it will add plus 1 so it will check if 11 plus 1 is 12 if that is true it will become true so we will keep checking for all of them so if all of them give us true 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 then we will say okay it's a straight if even one of them gives us something else for example uh, this one is let's say 7 so we write here 11 and it checks 7 plus 1 is 8 this one is false but the rest of them are true then it's not a straight so that's how we will check it so to do that we are going to write some efficient code so we are going to write for i in range so we are basically looping uh, and we need to loop through one because we are starting off uh, actually let me put it back because we are starting off with this value not this value we will pick this value and add one to it uh, sorry add one to the previous one because this value does not have a previous value so we will start from one and not zero so here we are going to write for i in uh, range uh, one till the length of our sorted ranks it will be five so it should be fine uh, but we are still writing it so th if that is the case so to make it a little more efficient we are going to write a single line for loop so instead of writing it after we will write it before that so what exactly are we writing we are writing that sorted ranks at i so uh, sorted ranks at i uh, not one <laughs> sorted ranks at i so this will be for example 11 this is equal to sorted ranks at i minus 1 plus 1 so this is what we are doing we are putting 11 equals 10 plus 1 right if that is the case and what we can do is we will keep getting the answer and all of this will be stored in a list so in that list we can just write here all 
if all of them are true, then it will give us true. If even one of them is false, it will give us false. So that's the basic idea. So we need to put another bracket here and we will put an if statement. Or is there a problem? One, two, two, three. Okay, there should no, not be a bracket here. Okay, so that's the idea. Let me comment this as well. Um, let me put this as well here so that you understand what exactly happened. So if that is true, it means it is a straight. So we can write possible ranks uh, dot append. What is a straight? A straight is number five. Number five. Did we add a straight so far? No. Actually, let's add all of them because that, that's annoying, you know, going back and forth. So after flush, we have straight. We have straight, then three of a kind, two pair, pair, and high card. So flush, then we have straight. Then we have three of a kind. Uh, then we have two pair. Then we have pair. And then we have high card. There you go. So now we did till flush. Now we are going to do straight. So for straight, we have jack of spades, uh, clubs, jack of club. Then we have 10 of hearts. Then we have nine of club. Then we have eight of club. And then we have seven of diamond. So this is our straight. And then poker hand, three of a kind. We have 10 of hearts, 10 of hearts. Then 10 of spades. 10 of spades, or is it? No, it's not spades, it's club, my bad. Uh, 10 of clubs and then 10 of diamonds. 10 of diamonds and then two of diamonds. Two of diamonds and then two uh, five of uh, spades. Then two pair, we have king of, king of diamond. Then we have king of hearts. Then we have five of clubs. Then we have five of spade. And then we have six of diamond. Then we have a pair. Pair we have two of diamond, two of, two of, uh, what is it? Spades. Then we have nine of nine of clubs and we have king of diamond. Then we have 10 of clubs. The last one is king of diamonds. So king of diamonds, five of diamonds, then two of diamond or oh, five of hearts, my bad. Five of hearts, two of diamond. And then 10 of clubs. And then jack of diamonds. Uh, jack of hearts. I'm getting mixed up now. <laughs> okay. So that's the idea. And now let's run it um, and see what you will get. So we should have the correct straight. So if we run this now, for straight, this is straight. It is uh, jack, 10, 9, eight seven and it is correct so this is straight now what we need to do is we need to take this straight part and we need to add it to our if statement here so we will put else if so first it will check if it's a flush and then it will check if it is a straight then it will become straight flush so straight flush is number nine so you can see here this is straight flush so it will become number nine so if we run that now, over here, we have the royal flush. It's fine. The straight flush is now being detected as well. So that's very good. So we have the straight flush here. <laughs> okay, so we have done one, two, 
uh, three and four so we have done four and we have also done the fifth which is the high card so we have done five out of ten so we are halfway done now what we will do is we are going to check for uh, four of a kind then we will check for three of a kind then two pair and then a single pair so uh, to understand how can we check for why is it showing a search let's remove that okay so to check let's do it after straight this is four of a kind now <clears throat> four of a kind if you have a list right uh, four of a kind will have four of them as the same and one card will be different so for example you will have three 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 and then five so three of uh, four of them are same and one of them is different right so what we can do is we can tell it we can tell the computer to find to create a set what does a set do a set will put all these three together and it will put this as separate so when you do a set to this when you do a set, this will become three and five. So we can check how many do we have? We have three and five. So after completing the set, how many values do we have? If we have two values, this means it might be four of a kind because there is another condition where you can have two set. And that is when you have, let's say three, 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 three 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 and five five so in that case if you do a set then also it will give you three and five so we need to check first of all whether when we convert it into a set does it give us two values if that is two then we need to check whether uh, this value comes three times or four times if it comes three times then it is four of a kind if it comes three times then it is full house because these are three three of a kind and this is um, a pair so it becomes full house so how can we do that first of all what we will do is we will get unique values so hand unique values equals set of uh, sorted ranks sorted ranks but uh, this will be a set uh, you cannot uh, use it as a list so we will convert it into a list to make it easier for us to work with so we will do that so if i print unique hands now print unique or oh, hand unique values so let's print that and for each hand it will print the unique values so for the first one there are no unique values so 8 9 10 11 12 so it's printing that for the second one again oh sorry the first one was here the second one no unique values in the third one you have unique values so you have five 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 it's three of them uh, four of them are five so it's giving us five and one of them is a 12 so it's giving us 12 and 5 so this one is basically four of a kind and after four of a kind we have a full house so that is also giving us two so it was giving us two and ten so these are three and this is two so now we need to check if if the unique hand list basically has two uh, values so first of all we need to check if it has two values if the length of hands unique values equals two if that is the case then it will be one of these four of a kind or full house actually we should we should put this here somewhere but it's okay i, I think we should put this one outside because this one is journal it will also be used for three of a kind it will also be used for full house for two pair and so on because this is unique values so now we are checking for four of a kind so now what we will do is 
we are going to check, we are going to loop through all the values. For, okay, for value, value in hand unique values, so it will loop through the values which will be 12 and 5, okay? So for each value, we need to count how many times is it present in our complete list. So we will say that how many times the value of, let's say, uh, uh, 3 is present in this whole uh, list. We need to check that. So we will say that sorted ranks dot count. So this is our sorted list. Where is it? This sorted list is basically 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or in this case, it is 5, um, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, Q, right? Uh, or queen is 13. Uh, no, it's 12. So it's uh, 5, 5, 5, and then 12. So that's our sorted. So we are going to check this value. How many times does it come in the main list? So we will write here val. And if that comes four times, then we are going to write, uh, we need to write if that is the case, then we will write possible rank dot append. Uh, what is four of a kind? Four of a kind is number eight. So we will append eight. And if it is not four times, if it's three times, then it means it is number seven, which is full house. If it's three times and the the, the set is two, this is a, a this is a unique value, this is a unique value, the set is two, and one of them is three, it means the other one will be two automatically. So we know that if it's three, then the rank is seven. So if we run this now, you will see that. Here we have the royal flush, straight, four of a kind. It's detected properly. This is four of a kind. There you go. And then if we have a full house, it is also detected properly. Oh, sorry, this is full house. This is uh, four of a kind. So here we have two and 10. So this is full house and this is four of a kind. There you go. And already we have the flush and the straight working. So that's good. So the same pattern we are going to use with uh, the, next, the next one, which is three of a kind. So here we have done the flush, we have done the straight, now we are going to three of a kind. So now we are going to three of a kind and two pair. So if, let's say, we have a three of a kind, so we will have five, 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 and five, and we will have, uh, let's say, six and seven because if we have six six it becomes a full house we are not talking about that right uh we are not talking about that because we have already done that so if it's six and seven then it will give us how many unique values it will give us three unique values because when we send it to a set the set will be five six and seven so it will give us three values uh we can also have three values in another scenario what is that scenario where you have, let's say, 8-8, eight, eight. this is a pair, you, then you have 7-7, seven, seven. that's also a pair, and then you have 3, let's say, uh, or let's say 2. So when you create a set of this, so you will have 8, 7, and 2. So how many unique values you have? Unique values are 3. Also here, unique values equals three. So in both cases, it's three. In this case, it is uh, three of a kind. And in this case, it is uh, two pair, right? So we need to check, first of all, if there are three, actually we can write here as well, unique values are two and unique values are two. There you go. 
So four of a kind, full house, and that. Okay, so here we need to check if the length of unique values is basically three. So here we are checking four of a kind and uh, full house. Here we will be checking three of a kind and pair. There you go. So uh, for both of them, we first need to check the unique values. There are three. Then we will check the values. If the value comes how many times? We will loop through the value. And if the value comes, so here the value will come three times. So if the value comes three times, then it is a three of a kind. So a three of a kind is 10. Uh, not 10, it's 4. So 3 of a kind is 4. And if the value comes 2 times, which means here, for example, is 2, and here, for example, it's 2, then it is a, then it is a 2 pair, which is 3. There you go. Uh, sorry, when it comes 2 times. So if it's 3 times, it is three of a kind, if it's two times, it is two pair. We can write it here as well. So it's easier to know what's going on here. Also, we can write four of a kind, and this one is full house. So it's, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is just think a little bit, how exactly can we do this? And uh, I believe, uh, only one is left. Let's run this first. And there you go. This is three of a kind because we have 10, 10, and 10. And the other two are different. So it's not a full house. It's three of a kind. And uh, actually, let's change it to full house. Here, three of a kind will make it full house. Uh, if we write here 10 as well, let's see if it detects as a full house. There you go. So where is it? Full house. There you go. No, full house is here. And then it's a four of a kind, sorry. I made it four of a kind, my bad. Uh, I wanted to make it full house, which means this is 2D. So this will be also 2D, my bad. So this will become a full house. There you go, see, now it's a full house. It means our methodology is working fine. So we have three of a kind working properly. Then we have two pair. So king, king is working fine. Five, five, that is a two pair, excellent. So now we have these uh, unique values. And then uh, the last one is very simple. Um, we are checking for a pair. Pair is simply when you have four values. So uh, for example, you have, uh, let me share an example here. So you have five, five, and then three, six, uh, seven, and eight. So the set of this, did I write more values? <laughs> I think, yeah. So the set for this will be five, five, uh, will be five, three, five, three, six, and seven, which are four unique, unique values equals four, which means a pair. That's how simple it is. So um, you will simply write possible rank dot append and you will write two because one is already there and that is your high card. So if we run this now and we go down and there you go. So here you are getting a pair, here you're getting a high card. So this is basically how we can um, get these values. So to repeat or to summarize what we have done, we have, first of all, extracted the ranks and the suits, and we have created a variable called possible ranks, uh, not a variable, a list in which we will store all those uh, ranks. Uh, actually, let's print out the possible ranks uh, before we uh, pr print possible ranks. And let's see if there are more than one. Yeah, here you can see it's three, three. Uh, both of them are three. So it's nine and five. Uh, 
So it is also a flush and it is also a straight. So uh, and then it is both of them together. So it's straight flush. Um, and then here you have four of a kind. So the rest of them, they don't have multiples, but this one has multiple as well uh, because it is a flush as well and it is uh, a royal flush as well. So it will take the bigger one, which is royal flush. So yeah, that's the idea. And then uh, as we were mentioning, so you extract all the ranks and all the suits. Once you have them in lists, you sort them because sorting them will make it easier, uh, especially when you are uh, finding the straight that will make it much easier. So you will first check for the royal flush. Uh, no, you will first check for the flush. So check, let me write here, uh, check for flush. Uh, and then it will check for royal flush over here. And then it will check for straight. If it is flush and it is royal, then it will be royal flush. If it's flush and it is straight, then it is straight flush. Otherwise, it will be simply flush. Uh, so this is flush, basically. Uh, then we have straight. In straight, uh, what we are doing is we are uh, we are checking the previous value and we are adding one to it and comparing it with our current value. So 11 is being compared with 10 plus 1. 12 is being compared with 11 plus 1. If all of them give us true value, if they are same, then it becomes uh, all of them are consecutively uh, listed and ranked. So that's why uh, we will write it as a straight. Then comes the unique values. So we will check the unique values by putting a set to the sorted ranks. If the unique values are two, it can have two possibilities, four of a kind or full house. If one of the values has four uh, counts, then it is a four of a kind. If one of the values has three counts, uh, then it is full house. Same way we are checking the unique values. And if the unique values are three, there are two possibilities. One of them is three of a kind. If um, uh, the value uh, has the count of three, and if the value has a count of two, it means it's two pair. And then if it's single pair, then the unique values, uh, the set will have a count of four. And um, if, if nothing else works out, then it is um, a high card. And once that uh, once all of that is done, we have our uh, what do you call dictionary with all the rankings and the numbers. And then from that, we uh, extract what output do we get? What is our result? So let me let me remove all the prints so that it is neat and clean. We don't want uh, too many things printed. Yeah. So then we only have the hand and what it is. Uh, detected as so royal flush straight flush four of a kind two pair and so on so this is basically how we can classify our poker hand and now we once we have written this code now we can go and use our trained model to find to detect that hand and then we will send it to our find poker hand and it will give us the output of what type of hand it is so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so now our process has been completed, the training is done, and we had 50 epochs completed in 7.5 hours. So for further details, you can look at the precision and recall curves, and we also have the confusion matrix and all these training and validation uh, batches. So what we will do now is we'll download the best one, and we are going to use that in our project. So we already have project four listed and we have created our poker hand function. And now what we will do is we will copy YOLO webcam because we'll be using our webcam to run it. So we'll simply copy that and we will name it poker hand detector. So once we have that, we will bring in our model. So here you can see this is best seven so let's drag that in and we will call it playing cards uh, .pt. and over here now we have to make the changes so that it detects these so first of all the class names we need to change so to change that we can go back to our data.yml file and we can copy all the names and we can simply 
paste them here and we can just cut this and paste it here there you go so to make it easier to understand what's going on and we have all the classes we can simply press enter after each of the ranks are done so after two is done then three four five six seven eight nine ace jack king and queen so as you can see we have all the classes listed here and the the video we are not going to use any video so we can remove that and we can open up the webcam and we will be using webcam one and this is the size and we will be using our own weight which is playing cards dot pt and let's run this now and see if it works so i have my webcam upside down and we have some playing cards here and we are going to test them out one by one and see how it performs once we know that all of these are detected properly we can go ahead and merge uh, our poker hand function with it so that we don't have any issues so let's see if that works it's actually running at the background so here let's put it in two there you go we are getting two edge which is basically two of hearts uh, then we have jack of clubs that's good we have queen of spades that's good so uh, in order to make it a little bit more efficient what we can do is we can put all of the twos together and see if they work fine there you go two of diamond two of clubs two of spades and two of hearts so we are detecting them properly that's good then we have the clubs oh sorry the threes let's try those and three of diamond three of club three of heart three of spades that's working fine as well uh, we have to do this to make sure everything is working fine uh, there might be one or two classes that are not detected properly so we have to make sure all of them are correct heart spades diamond and um, clubs so those are fine as well so so far it is giving us really good results and uh, it's very fast as well as you can see so this is five of spade five of diamond heart and club there you go then let's check the six let's put them like that diamond club heart and spade that's fine then let's put seven let's try it like that seven all of them are correct let's try eight eight all of them are correct nine yep all of them are correct ten yep correct then we have jack yep correct then let's try the queen yep correct let's try the kings wait i'm missing a king <laughs> oh what happened i am missing a king okay so let's let's just try with the cards we have oh no i found it never mind okay club heart spade diamond excellent and now the moment of truth the last one the ace ace of spade heart club and diamond perfect so we have 100 out of 100 being detected 
properly um actually 52 out of 50 52 so what we will do now is once we detect first of all we we, we are already displaying it we are going to put it um, in a variable called hands or hand hand is equal to empty now once we have this we are going to send this hand to our poker hand function so here if we import now in order to import this we'll have to rename it rename file and we will write it poker hand function without the dashes so that it's easily imported so we'll write here from poker so we can write here import poker and function so now we will have the ability to use find poker hand so we can go down here and we can send it to find so we can write poker hand function dot poker hand function dot find poker hand and we will send in our hand so we will check the results equal this and what we have to do is we have to first of all make sure that uh, we have five different cards so if there are four or two or three that then it should not work so we should have a total of five so if the length of hands if the length of hand uh, equals five then only we are going to send this if it's more or less we should not send it so once that is done we can simply print the results uh, we can display it we will display it now but for now we'll do that okay so once we are actually detecting this uh, we can put for example a limitation that if the confidence level is greater than 0 0.5 then uh, hand dot append we are going to append the class name so the class name is basically cls so this is not actually the class name the class name is class names of cls there you go so we will append that so what we can do is we can we can print a uh, hand so let's try that out and see how it works because we want to see what exactly are we sending before we actually see the results so let's put two cards in and let's see what result we get so there you go we have uh, some results here so there you go uh, it is appending oh Oh, it keeps adding to it, which is not good. The hand should be after each iteration, it should update and it should clear out. So we need to have uh, a fresh start every time it runs an iteration. So there you go. We have, we have these AS, AH and AH. AS, AH and AH. Okay. So the problem here is that it's showing it twice so that's not good so what we need to do is we need to uh, create a set and send it back to a list so this way it will uh, only have unique values because we cannot have two of the same cards uh, it mm -hmm. cannot be possible so we can simply just do a set and then it should work fine so here we can write hand equals a set of hand and then we can Put it in a list again and we will print it before and we will print it after so there you go so if this is the case then the set is like this so we are getting one of each so that's good that's exactly what we want so as you can see here it is detecting but we are getting one of them okay so now what we can do is we can add five of these and it should give us the result. So let's put a four of a kind which, because it's really easy here. I have already A's lined up 
and we have these A's and then we can add simply another card which is a king and we should get an output here so let's go at the end and let's see so there you go we are getting four of a kind so the moment of truth has been revealed and we're getting a four of a kind excellent so that is really amazing to see how it works now what we can do is we can simply put it on on display so that we can see it in real time so here cv zone put text we can copy that and we can paste it here and instead of the class name we'll uh, do the result the results and we will write uh, your hand and we will write it like that uh, so here we are going to give in the position of zero and zero let's say or should we put it in the middle mm, let's do a little bit in the middle what's the size 1280 uh, maybe 300 and the height maybe 50 and the scale we want it big so let's put it at five and the thickness let's put it at six um, hopefully this will give us some good results. Okay, so it's too big. Um, we need to push it down a little bit and we need to make it a little bit smaller. So maybe three and thickness is five and we push it down further to 75. Let's run that. There you go your hand four of a kind excellent so what if what if i remove one of the ace and i put a king there then it becomes full house your hand is a full house that's excellent and uh, what if i put instead of an ace i put another king and okay where is this okay i need to remove that and then i put a random card let's say six then it should be two pair excellent so what we'll do is we'll go one by one and we will test out each of these scenarios so let's put it together and let's see what do we get so let me try to put this here so the first one we are going to do is royal flush so in which we have ace uh, then we have uh, of the same type so we will have the king of diamond then we have the queen of diamond and then we have the jack of diamond and then we have the ten of diamond so that should give us royal flush so there is another card coming in here let's put them straight there you go so now it should give us the result but it's not uh what is the issue ten of diamond j d q d k d and a d uh what seems to be the issue a k h j d 10 d q d and k d so there's a 10 d somewhere for some reason Yeah, there is a 10D. Yeah, the 10D is supposed to be there. A, K, J. There's another K. K, H. Where is the K, H? Oh, okay. So it's detecting it here. My bad. So there was another card uh, on the side. That's why it was detecting that. Okay. So there you go. So you have a royal flush. Excellent. Now let's try a straight flush. So uh, we have let's say king queen jack 10 and if we put a nine uh, nine of diamond then it will become a straight flush because it will not be a royal it will be a straight flush there you go so now it is a straight flush and let's try four of a kind so we are going to add ace 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 and a king so or a nine so ace 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 and where is the other ace there you go there you go hand four of a kind that's perfect 
Then we will try a full house. So we will remove the A and we will put a 9. So that is a full house. Excellent. Now we will try a flush. So let's put all diamonds. So random, random diamonds. Uh, doesn't have to be straight or anything. So we are going to put 6 and a 5. There you go. And we have another one. So there you go. So even if they are um, not exactly straight, it will still detect them. So full house. Uh, then we had a flush. The flush is working fine. Now let's try out a straight. So uh, let's try out 5. Then we will try um, 2, 3, 2, 3. Now we need a 4. We also need a 6. And where is the 4? Come on. Where is the 4? There you go. So we have a 4. So there you go. Your hand is straight. So it's upside down. It's not really organized, but still you're getting a straight. It's not very stable. I'm not sure why. If you push it further. Yeah, there you go. Now it's much um, stable, much more stable. So we're getting a straight. Uh, that's perfect. Then we have to try a three of a kind. So let's try uh, with queens. So these are three queens. And then we have a two and a king. So your hand is three of a kind. Perfect. Uh, then we have two pair. So let's remove the queen and let's add a king. So that will become two pair. What happened? Um, there you go. It becomes two pair. And that, then let's try a single pair. There you go. Your hand is a pair. And uh, let's remove the queen. And let's put a five here. And that should give us high card. There you go. It gives us high card. So this is basically our project successfully done. And it looks really good. And uh, we are getting real time output. And let's let's try to try it in our hand and see what it gives us. There you go. It gives us high card. So it gives us high card and uh, let's try it uh, with a pair or something so that we can see if it works properly or not. Um, there you go. So it is a pair. It is a pair. And then let's put another king here. It will become three of. There you go. Three of a kind. Three of a kind. And then let's make it four of a kind. I think it filled up. No, um, we need another king. Where is the king? There you go. So we'll get four of a kind. We have four of a kind. And then let's try a flush. So let's make a flush of diamonds flush of diamonds there you go it's a flush excellent and what else can we try let's try uh, a full house so we have Queen, Queen, and King, and a King, and we need another Queen. There you go. So this should be a full house. Full house. Yep. And if we remove the Queen and put, let's say, two, then it will become two pair. There you go. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, um, our object detection model is working really good and our uh, poker hand detector is also very working very good so this was our project as you can see you can put all these things together and it really creates uh, a great project and it gives you a lot of information and it is fun to play around with as well so object detection is like a superpower once you understand how to train your custom models you can really 
uh, explore the possibilities and create some really good projects that are very useful in real world applications. So I hope you have learned something here and I hope you will uh, apply these methods uh, to some good use. If you like this course, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you loved it, share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one.